Let's roll. It's the game you've thought about, the one you've dreamt about, the one that kept you going, running those stadiums when the thermostat said 13, and 6 a.m. workouts as the sun is still sleeping. It's kept your legs pumping through training in the summer heat. And just when everything inside you is telling you to give up, you don't. You won't, because the thought of victory eluding you one more time is worse than the pain you're feeling now. This is for the bell. This one's been circled for a year. And while it's steeped in tradition, story, and rivalry, it's not determined by any of the last 100 years that these teams have gone to battle. So ignore the hype, the press, the rankings, and the crowd. You must be relentless. You must do your job. This is for the bell. It's the battle between you and the guy lined up across from you. To be the best, you have to beat the best. Drown out the noise. You have set your sights on this goal. Your daily effort, dedication, and determination have brought you to a unique and uncommon destination. You are now humble and hungry. You like that? Yeah! Let's roll. The 104th meeting between two bitter rivals only separated 20 minutes apart. It's the battle for the Little Brass Bell as the 10th ranked Wheaton Thunder take on the number one ranked team and defending national champions, the North Central Cardinals. Hello from the booth. First of all, happy homecoming. Alongside Tim Marsh and Chris Fossum, I'm Aiden Kong. And since the start of the season, this has been a matchup that everyone has been talking about in Division Three. You circle on your calendar. You might as well put three exclamation marks because the stakes could have not been higher for both teams. Yeah, that's right. Uh this is the game that everybody looks forward to. You, you, it's fun that it's on homecoming. I wish it wasn't uh, in the end of September. I wish it was the last game of the season, but I'm pretty pumped up. How about you, Chris? Well, I think any player wants to play in big games, and you got an opportunity to do that here today. So for both of these programs, uh, these young men have devoted their, their off seasons to moments like this. So excited to see big players make big plays and big moments today. It's going to be a fun day. Yep, and before we continue to preview the teams, we'll take it down to the field for the singing of the national anthem presented by Wheaton's very own Men's Glee Club.
Thunder enter this game after pulling away against the Augustana Vikings 41 to 34. Quarterback Ben Thorson, he's played well this season, but him and this entire offense will have their toughest test against Coach Durkins and the suffocating Cardinals defense. Yeah, that was a good fun game last week. It's been nice to see the offense pretty, roll pretty much all year. We've been a, a very physical team up front. We've got big playmakers on the outside. It's been fun fun to see them, uh, and that's a good win always against a tough Augie team. Yeah, and I think what's impressive about this team is that they've faced some adversity throughout the season already, three games in, and what's been impressive is how they've responded in those moments and made plays when they've needed to on both sides of the ball, which is exciting coming into this game. Meanwhile, we'll take it down to the field once again for the presenting of the coin toss. This game are really what North Central has done as a program over the years to build themselves into the powerhouse they've become, but really did it from the line, right? They yeah. built it from the front and have always had exceptional skill position players, but what's been impressive over the last three or four seasons is how they've really won the battle at the line of scrimmage, and that's put them on a, a trajectory that's put them at the top of the Division Three football landscape. So we'll be excited to see how the game in the trenches goes today. Yeah, that's right. I got some big dudes out there for the coin toss. North Central. North Central has won the toss and goes in to receive at the scoreboard. Dropping not to defer to the second half, we'll see Luke Lanen and this talented Cardinals offense on the field first, and we'll see Wheaton's defense also take the field first as the North Central faithful again, only 20 minutes from here in Naperville, coming to support their team, number one ranked team in the country. Meanwhile, Wheaton here on homecoming, also here in attendance. And I keep it going. Yeah, I think we've got, uh, you know, to be honest, that's a little surprising that North Central would take the ball. Uh, oftentimes you win that toss, you choose to defer get the ball to start the second half but I think both these teams are so hyped for a game like this where you want to come out fast you want to come out stick to your guns this is a high-powered offense for North Central right they've been up I think 49 nothing at halftime of both conference games that they've played have had no problem moving the ball their defense is very stout as well uh, but it's a I think they I think they want to really set the tone here and go right over this defense that was a little porous last week against Augustana, giving up 34 points. Well, that will be the challenge. How the defense for Wheaton responds, ultimately, I think North Central is trying to send a message here by taking the ball and saying, hey, we're going to give you our best shot. And in a heavyweight fight like this, you're going to take some shots, and it's going to be how the defense responds. And ultimately, I think Wheaton will want to uh, possess the ball as much as they can in this game. Well, and, and what I would say right here, Chris and I, Aiden, right now, want this kicker to put the ball five yards into the end zone. <laughs> we've really, I think, if there was one weakness that we've seen so far, it's our kick coverage mm. unit. Will be Josh win it to send it away for the Thunder. Back deep to receive Sean Allen, Drack Rummel here on homecoming, which has essentially served as the de facto CCIW championship game since 2019. The winner has gone on to win the conference title. Glad you're with us from wherever you may be. And let's roll. 
And that kick will go into the end zone, no return. <laughs> so that means we will see the Cardinals offense start from the own from their own 25 yard line and Luke Leenan. It'll be interesting to see what we uh, defensively come out to do and ultimately what North Central, as we've said earlier, they want to win the ball, the game at the line of scrimmage. They are a, a powerful running football team, averaging a little over six yards a carry, uh, but have some playmakers on the edges. You know, obviously, D'Angelo Hardy stands out as a receiver with great tenure and great statistics, but also have a uh, deep ball threat with uh, Lombardi out there as well. And obviously, Lennon is a dual threat quarterback. It'll be interesting to see what we've got here. In the in 31 and 1 as a start. That only loss to Mount Union two years ago in the national championship game. But other than that, perfect in CCIW action. First down and 10, and it's going to be a handoff. It's going to be Joe Saka who takes the carry. Pile of thunders there to bring him down, though. I think what we're going to see here from Thunder defensively is I think we're going to see more guys in the box than usual. We're probably going to get that safety down uh, closer to the box, or maybe we get a fourth linebacker in there, more of a 4-4 look uh, instead of playing uh, a, more of a cover two shell or a two high safety shell and um, try to stop that run and say, hey, North Central beat us with the big play. Especially after the Thunder gave up 248 rushing yards last week against Augustana. Second down now in eight, and they'll once again give it to Sacco. He's got some space down the sideline. There goes Sacco off to the races inside the 30, the 25, the 20, the 15, 10, 5, and he's going to take it all the way for the touchdown. What a start for the Cardinals on their second play. Joe Sacco to the house. Yeah, that's just an outside power right there. They pulled both guards. They got out uh, and, and kicked out our edge, edge player and led on through on a linebacker, and it wasn't even touched. Yeah, on the first play of the game, they ran similar concept, and with a run blitz, we blew that up, took out both guards on the polling situation. They, out of a different formation, spread us out and uh, got the edge, and it was the rest was history. Sacco's sixth rushing touchdown of the season. What a start for the North Central Cardinals is the extra point on the way, and it is good. An early 7-0 lead for the Cardinals to make their statement. Yeah, I think what, what a statement it was. Yeah, that's exactly what North Central wanted to do, take the ball. I don't know if they thought it was two run plays, but they wanted to be physical, and they were at the line of scrimmage and uh, attacked some of the things they saw last week. They were running weak side, pulling both, both, uh, both offensive linemen, and they did a phenomenal job kicking out. And on that second play, really unable to contain the edge and he was gone and yeah we were just talking about that rushing defense of thunder really struggling against tyler ravelli mike DeJoy, and so far not showing any signs of improvement from last week yeah well i think as we come out on the field here now the mentality of the thunder really is like hey these are the defending national champs they're going to be the aggressor you're going to take a punch it's going to be how wheaton responds obviously the the offense has made plays in big situations we want to get out, get a couple first downs, control this game, bring it back into the, the, the mindset where we're back and forth. And then ultimately the defense is over there. Coach is going to get them dialed up, and we'll see how they respond on the second drive. But I think the offense really coming in here has the mentality of uh, let's control the clock, let's control the ball. Sean Reinick for the Cardinals. The freshman to send it away. Cornovan and Jack Allen back to, to receive, and it will be Jack oh. Allen from inside his own 10. There goes Allen trying to cut back and find some space. Allen in across the 40th. It's going to be blocked down all the way to the 46-yard line. He's had some big plays on special teams. Right. That's another Howard. example. If we can get a highlight on that, Ryan Howard absolutely decleated one of the North Central kick yeah, Riley, Riley Howard, he, uh, I mean, that was a big stick if I've ever saw him. That, that set the message. Stick. Opened up the hole. Jack Allen hit the seam. This is a great start to the Thunder office. offense. Anytime you can start a possession on your own 45-yard line, sets the team up for success. Great play there by the special team. So it'll be from their own 46. Ben Thorson now back out there. Definitely going to be going up against his toughest test yet. And Giovanni Weeks, what a season it's been for him. What a career it's been for him. Thorson on the run pass option. Firing pound pick and oh. almost intercepted. Oh, so close. Julian Bell, it would have been a pick six if he hung on to it. That was a phenomenal play by, by Wheaton there just to make a, make a play to keep the ball from ending up in the DB's hands. Obviously, with them being that tight to the line of scrimmage, they're asking to be double moved with an aggressive play. Yeah, like I think that what we've seen a lot out of Wheaton this year is a lot of that quick game, and I think that's what North Central was expecting. You know, not, not a lot of deep threat in this offense right now. Bell named the first team all CCIW almost had that takeaway. Here's now Giovanni Weeks with a nice carry, gets it into Cardinal territory and takes it across to the 47, some early rather late action on the play and here comes a flag it was angelo Cusimano who was tossed down and i think that's going to be going against wheaton well, that was ben jessica i think just blocking through the whistle obviously there's a lot of energy in this game but costly penalty and a really positive play for wheaton that's going to turn into a after the play was over dead ball personal foul number 18 of wheaton 15 yard penalty from the 
end of the run. Third down. And he has a costly penalty. It's going to bring up third down and long. And again, it's a top 10 matchup. These two teams, they do not like each other. Wheaton's going up against the number one ranked team in the country. And you, you just got to be able to control your energy right there. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a bad play from a great player. Um, you let your emotion get the best of you there. You know, you are always, you're always coached to, to block through the whistle, and that was a little bit too much. Yep. Officially, it's third down and 19 from the Thunder 37-yard line. They must get all the way to the North Central 44 to pick up a first down. Man With coverage here. Giovanni Weeks coming back into the backfield. And now here's Thorson on a four-man lock. Or she's going to dial up the deep ball for Ben Bonga, but it's overthrown yeah, and incomplete. And here comes a flag. It's 100% a penalty. As a former DB who wore 26, it's definitely a penalty. You can't grab the guys who's running past you. Yeah. It was Antoine Walker, who is jarring with Bonga. It looks like they're going to get him. He had a solid grab on the shoulder pads and the jersey while the ball was in the air. I know he puts his hands Best up. Best interference. Defense number 26. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. I mean, it's age-old football. It's going to be who controls and protects the football. It's going to be penalties, and those two poor plays by players that are very talented offset each other, kind of reset the play clock here, reset the downs. I appreciate that call, though, and throw by Thorson, where really that's the one-on-one -on -one matchup. It's not a high percentage throw, but it's third and 19. You're just going to take a shot and see if your guy can make a play. Thunder now operating at the Cardinals' 48-yard line as that penalty moves the chains. It's an 11-yard penalty. Giovanni Weeks in the backfield, and they will feed it to him. Weeks looking to cut it back inside. And he's going to be dragged down at about the 44-yard line. That's a real positive first down play. Four yards, but what North Central's doing, they're lining up with six guys in the box, but that edge linebacker is trying to play both worlds. You could see him creeping, daring us to run. you got to make sure as a defense you can't let them do that. they got to commit either to be in the box or protect the pass, and it will be a question on if we can keep running the ball like this against the six-man box. Danny Nuchira, the junior at Plainfield, Illinois, was the one who wrapped down Giovanni Weeks. A gain of four, second down and six. He'll bring some pressure. Thorson going to set up a screen. Here's Giovanni Weeks with some space. Trying to follow his blockers as Weeks first down all the way across inside the 40, and he's going to be brought down at the 36-yard line. I'll tell you one thing about this Wheaton offensive line. they got some nasty to them. They like to finish their blocks. They're not intimidated by this stout North Central defensive line. Um, and they're just they're going to have to hold up because that's where Wheaton's strength is. Wheaton's strength is this offensive line. Yeah, Paul Fay and Trevor Gabriel, all CCIW going up against Dan Lester, an All-American. From the 31-yard line, and they'll toss it, and nowhere to go. A great play. Jack Allen was there on the receiving end, but he's immediately dragged down by Martin Ebo. Yeah, he was there waiting for it. They were not biting on that run fake, and he was there staying home as he should. You know, I think that's what you uh, you would hope your defense is going to do, contain the edge. Big Fish loss. Officially a loss of five, so it's now second down and 15 from the 36-yard line opening drive for the Thunder. One of the things that I think Jesse does a great job as the, off as the coach and offensive coordinator Here's Thorson once again, another handoff and another good hole for Giovanni Weeks who plows his way to about the 29-yard line. Going to be a gain of about seven. You know, it looks here, you're, you're on the 29-yard line. Wheaton's really struggled in the kicking game. I think Jesse saw, hey, we've got six guys in the box. Looks like they're playing soft coverage. Let's run it, get in third and long. We're probably going to go for it anyways. Thunder 9 of 16 on third down last week against Augustana. This is the seventh play of the drive. Third and eight officially. They must get to the 21-yard line to pick up a first down. With once again Giovanni Weeks motioning in and out, likely showing man-on-man -man coverage perhaps. And I'll bring some pressure here. Storson to the outside pass. It's going to be caught. Nice Seth Kortnoven has the short. grab. But as you said, it looks like he's going to be about one yard shy of the first down. That's just as you said, Tim. I think the part that's real encouraging to me is the, the line of scrimmage is where this game is won, and Wheaton is physically asserting their, you know, at the line of scrimmage, picking up blitzers, giving Thorson time to throw the football. And uh, as Tim said, they are stepping up for the moment. And how about this? The Thunder going for it on fourth down on their opening drive. They only need two yards. They're three of five on fourth down conversions this season, which is tied for the second best in the CCIW. What will be the call? It will be Giovanni Weeks on the ground game, and he picks up the first down. And this is what you want if you're Wheaton in this situation. This is a sustained drive that's physically being won at the line of scrimmage. We're running the ball four or five yards a carry. I think that the, the question will be, can we continue to stay with that?
take but it's the, the type of runs, Chris, right? If you see the ones that are going, it's they're giving the ball to Gio. He's coming downhill at this defense, and we're letting these offensive linemen double team at the point of attack and be physical. You know, we run side to side. You can't outrun a speedy defense. First down and 10 from the 17, a huge fourth down conversion to keep the chains moving as Coach Scott opting to be aggressive. And this time it's going to be Henry Brown, the backup running back, who's in the game, and he's going to take it inside the 15. Just a note. Christian Carson, who typically is the backup running back, not available. He's out with an injury, so instead it will be Henry Brown taking the carries. Yeah, that's a, that's a big loss for the Thunder offense. He's been a, a real bright spot this year. Yeah, he brings an extra pop. I mean, Gio is a phenomenal back, but him in the backfield made a, a great one-two punch. We'll, we'll be excited to see how we can get some more experience. Yeah, Carson's on the season over 200 scrimmage yards. That was a gain of three by Brown, second down and seven. And it's Thorson looking to throw for the end zone pass. It's going to be caught for the touchdown. It's an easy pit, pitch and catch. I mean, they had everybody open there. Well, really what happened there is North Central had been trying that whole drive to control and, and play half in, half out of the box. And on that last drive after we gashed him fourth down, they brought that linebacker in the box and said, we're going to have seven. You're not going to run the ball. We ran it for two yards on first down. But then play action is wide open. You had Jessica in the flat. Mm -hmm. Obviously, That's actually what I thought drive. they were going to. Yeah, but instead they go to Ben Bongo, now has his third touchdown of the season. Now it's Mateo Jesh on for the extra point to tie things up here. And the kick is good. And so we're all knotted up at seven apiece here in the battle for the little brass bell. I had the chance to meet Mateo yesterday after football chapel. Great young man. Proud to see him out there executing the extra point. There we go. Future's bright. That's the exact drive that we, that we, as Thunder fans, wanted to see from, from the offense there. Take some time off the clock. I think you got to try to shorten the game with this North Central team. They're so explosive on offense. you got to make them earn it. That's been one of the things that Wheaton and C.J. Nightingale has been so good at over the years is making sure that a team doesn't get that big explosive play down the sideline for a touchdown, that you got to make an 8, 9, 10-yard or 10 play drive. Yeah, and I think the mark that's most encouraging to me, I mean, if you're reading in that situation, you come out, you get punched in the mouth, and you respond. That offense, great special teams play, sets them up for success, overcome a penalty, sustain a drive, get a fourth down conversion, and the game's tied here. I mean, ultimately, the defense, Coach Nightingale have certainly coached them up, and they'll have a chance to respond to this North Central offense here. Uh, as we said before, we hope this uh, this kickoff goes six yards out of the back of the end zone. Bonga's catch, by the way, caps off an 11-play drive that started from their own 46, 54 yards to the end zone. Oh, man, come on, come on. And back deep, Tercy, that's going to go out of bounds, and it's going to be a penalty. That means the Cardinals' offense will start from their own 35. You just can't do that. I mean, you just have a 10-play drive for a touchdown. You cannot kick a ball out of bounds. You kicked it through the end zone on the previous kickoff and it's it's situational football i mean there's stats that are uh, are quite compelling that show a ball that starts at the 25 for an offense's uh, success rate is substantially lower than starting at your 35 so defense is going to chance to respond here we'll see what coach nightingale gets dialed up here with this uh, second possession and the first drive as we said 75 yards on two plays pretty easy for our statisticians to chalk <laughs> that one up but we'll see if the thunder defense has any answers and coach nightingale as a response, and it'll be a handoff. Joe Sacco trying to find some space as Sacco gets it across the 40. Game tackled by Max Wilson on the play. One of the things that, that you notice when you watch some of the film on, on North Central is Sacco's a good running back. He's shifty. Uh, he can make a guy. He's not Ethan Greenfield, right? He's, he's a very good football player, but I would definitely say he, they're a little bit they're not quite as good in the backfield, but he is a good shifty player. It's just a different look than what we've seen the last three or four years from North Central. Great stiff arm there, yeah. chucking the tackler. I mean, Wheaton did what they wanted. They blew up the pulling guards again with a blitzing linebacker in a run blitz situation, but just didn't, didn't secure the tackle. Gain of nine on that first down carry. And now here is Lane in looking to throw. Lane in trying to buy some time. Now he'll take off and run. There goes the wheels of Luke Lane. And we were talking about this at the top of the broadcast, the dual threat ability of quarterback Luke Lane. He can do it all. He really can. And he's that's where he's most dangerous, when you can get him outside of the pocket. And, the, you know, that's you have to respect that running game, right? You have to respect their ability to, to beat you. And so when he pulls it and he gets out on the edge, usually that guy is open. That was nice by of the secondary to, to at least cover the tight end. But... Then they you did give up job. 15 yards rushing. Kept yep. his eyes downfield. He wanted to throw it, but he's got the legs to run it, which. First down and 10 now from the 47 yard line with Lane and now the shotgun. And they'll once again hand it off to Joe Sacco. And he'll take it into Thunder territory. The tackle being made by Johnny Eller. 
For those who love a physical football game, you can see at the line of scrimmage, both these offensive line, uh, they're moving the, the line of scrimmage three or four line, four, three or four yards downfield. This is, if you love physical football, a great start to this game for both offenses and their ability to dictate what's going on in the football field right now. If I'm North Central here, I got to think you're, you're in a perfect spot here to run a little play action pass and take a shot to D'Angelo Hardy right here. Absolutely. Second down and six now from the 43-yard line. D'Angelo Hardy, by the way, to the top of your screen. I'll go on a stretch run with Sacco trying to find some space. There goes Joe Sacco. Another big run inside the 20, the 15, the 10. Another rushing touchdown for Sacco. What a game so far for him. Yeah, the ability to contain the edge is paramount on defense, and that's two run plays. This time they ran to the strong side and wide side of the field and just stretched that play out. Had a man on a man, hat on a hat, and he found the crease, and he was gone. That was nice patience, too. I mean, he, he definitely, once he found that hole, he was patient, put his foot in the ground, and no one was catching him. Sacco now 131 yards yeah. in the first quarter, two rushing touchdowns. Had 131 yards in the win against Carthage, and he's in for a big game if the Thunder defense cannot stop. As the extra point is good by Sean Reinick. And so two drives, two touchdowns for the Cardinals. And it's all coming through that grounding, ground game and Joe Sacco. Something to note, the Wheaton pressure on that right uh, or left side of the offense, right side of that kick. Now we've been close on two of those. Yeah. So keep an eye on that as the game progresses. Extra points are going to be key in this game. If you watch that, that highlight that just played, you saw a lot of North Central offensive linemen staying on their block for extended period of times, right? Yep. <clears throat> there, that's... As a defensive player, you cannot stay blocked, right? It's there's a lot of there's guys on the ground, guys blocked 15 yards downfield. Got to get off a block. Well, and as we said at the outset of the broadcast, I mean North Central's ascension to really yeah. always having great skill position players over the last several decades uh, have been top of the conference in their respective areas, but they really ascended in the line play, and you can see it there. It shows these guys are well coached. They're great athletes. They are leaders on this team and they show with their actions. I mean, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a sight to see. And the Jesse, Jackie Naples as well as Jared Thornton, all American offensive linemen protecting Luke Lane and creating some big running holes as that return for Jack Allen. He's not going to take it out. He'll go into the end zone for a touchback. And so now the Wheaton offense coming onto the field for their second drive, which will start at their own 25. So in, Chris and I played a long time ago, but when we played Mount Union was the was the team to beat, and we when when we played them, it was you'd watch film before the game, and, and as you're preparing for the week, and you say, "Gosh, why are these teams doing such dumb things as when they play Mount Union? If they just played the right way, they'd stay in these games." And then you play Mount Union, and they make you do dumb stuff because they're really good and they're really physical. Well, that's North Central now. You, they just are so physical and so talented that oftentimes you find yourself in a position you never thought you'd be. Especially given how North Central had won the last two national championships uh, the last three years. Of course, 2020, there was no national championship because of COVID-19. Here is Giovanni Weeks all the way up to the 29-yard line. Great first down play. Four or five yards on first down. A lot of plays for second and six. Puts the offense on schedule and a uh, place to really call what you want. Jesse Scott has been down this defense up, or offense up to make great plays all season long. We'll see what Coach Scott has here on second down. And so far, the Thunder not afraid to run that football against the heart of this defense. And if Ben Thorson's going to have success, it's going to have to come first through the running game and Giovanni Weeks being really successful. Totally agree. Giovanni Weeks, by the way, entering this game, only 87 rushing yards shy of tying So Olatechu for the most career rushing yards. Second down, and they will give it to Weeks. Giovanni Weeks swimming all the way down to the 35-yard line. The tackle made by Julian Bell. Far side spot had him a little closer to the line of scrimmage. Looked like it'd be third and short. I think it's a good spot here on the, the home side line judge. Had the chance to see Shola yesterday at the Wheaton Football uh, Alumni Golf Outing. Yeah. Mm. Good to see him, yeah. obviously, for everything he's done for Wheaton Football and the impact it's had on his life. Uh, great to see him, and obviously Gio's a great young man, so excited to see what he's doing here with the football in his hand. Thunder operating out of 12 personnel with one running back and two tight ends. Third down and one now from the 34. Ben Bonga to the bottom of your screen. Movement up front and a flag. And this looks like it's going to go against the Thunder ben offense. Ball. False start. Offense number 69. Five-yard penalty. Third down. That's tough. Ian, on that, I am, my first thought on when he got tackled just short is get up on the line, go quick, pick up the first down. Now you're, now you're back behind the, behind the chains, probably looking to throw the ball here. <clears throat> Someone's going to have to make a play. I mean, it's difference it's of philosophy. I think, you know, going to hard count in that situation, I get it if they jump, but I just physically you've been dominating the line of scrimmage. Get up there and run over them. 
Seth Kornhoven in motion. Third down and six after the penalty. Going up against the eighth best third down defense in the country. Here is Thorson looking to throw pass. It's going to be caught down the sideline, and it's going to be Caleb Titherington who moves the change in a first down for Wheaton. You know, that's interesting there. I think North Central was a little confused by formation. You had a bunch set down here to the to the boundary on the near hash here, and they no didn't have they didn't defender. have a flat player on third and five. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, I, I mean, ultimately they want to keep everything in front of them. They want to make you march down the field and earn right. it. They're not going to get out of that uh, at risk of giving up a big play because they know they can. Titherington's 10th catch of the season, still looking for his first touchdown in his career, and there is Giovanni Weiss going absolutely nowhere. That. North Central defense staying tough. It's Mark and Igbo, one of the men there to tackle him. Yeah, the uh, defensive line there for the first time really kind of insert, asserting their will on the Wheaton offensive line. But great job by North Central. Uh, Igbo definitely has made a couple plays, made himself known both on that reverse and there setting the edge on the weak side. Talented young man. The loss of two. Igbo, by the way, three tackle for losses entering this game. Second down and 12 from the Thunder 38-yard line. Weeks in motion. They'll bring pressure. Here's Thorson throwing pass. It's going to be caught, and it's going to be a first down. It's Ben Juska, the tight end, preseason All-American, and just a comfort blanket for Ben Thorson. Well, they're letting them play out there. I don't know what happened out here in the curl route, but there was a lot of contact. Uh, ended up with a Wheaton receiver on the ground. Obviously let the flat defender uh, occupied, which led to a Wheaton first down. But I like the refs. They're letting this be a physical game, uh, letting the kids play. But... This is definitely no love lost between these two football teams. And we right definitely now. knew that entering this game, it was going to be a little bit chippy given this rivalry. That's lasted for almost 100 years, by the way, that game. Last play was a gain of 11 now from the 49-yard line. 420 left to go in the first quarter. Run pass, option pass is batted down at the line. Ebo. And it's Ju yep, Ebo saying, no, -uh, not mm -hmm. on my watch. Yeah, he's making plays. He's definitely, I mean, when you look at the stat sheet, his name pops out coming into this game. And... Uh, he's not just doing it on the stat sheet, he's doing it on the football field right now. So getting his arms up when you can't get pressure on the quarterback is what they teach the D-line to do, and he did just that. So after the incompletion, second down and 10, still from the Thunder 49-yard line. And it's going to be a handoff, handoff to Henry Brown plowing ahead. Great effort. As he gets it all the way to, I believe, about the 44, maybe 43-yard line. Should bring up third and short. Yeah, I think there was contact in the hole right at the line of scrimmage on that. So for Brown to muscle through, I think there were two or three arm tackles that he broke through. Just kept his feet driving. It's all mentality. you got to choose to not go down easy, and it's great to see the young man get an opportunity today and driving the ball forward. Yeah, Brown entering this game only six carries, 25 yards, and one rushing touchdown. Most of that was in dump time, dump off time during Illinois Wesleyan. It's now third down and four. They roll the pocket to the left. Here's Thorson looking for somebody. Fires in the pass. Oh. is dropped. It's going to be incomplete. It was intended, I believe, Jessica. Yeah, Jessica. Ben Jessica. Yeah, that is a great effort. You know, it's tough, tough for the quarterback there rolling left. Ben did, Thorson did a great job there, delivered a strike, and you, you just got to make that play. Yep, squared his shoulders to the line of scrimmage, put the ball on the money. I mean, it had some sauce on it, but, I mean, that's where you, you're going to go to your best players, and you got to make big plays in big situations. So Wheaton electing to punt. I think that makes a lot of sense here, but ultimately it's going to be a question now of the defense here. How are we going to respond to this run game? So drive that started from their own 25 stalls at the North Central 43 again. That number one defense from last season making a stop. And now here's Josh Winnett to send it away. Back deep to receive and calling for the fair catch and not going to take it. And this one will bounce inside the own five. And what a play by the special teams. I don't think he got into the end zone, so that means the Cardinals the are going to start at the one. Wow. That was very close. It was very close. Great special <laughs> that teams play. a lot play. more interesting than I thought it was going to be. Phenomenal punt. Yep. I think I think one of the things you'd want there is your gunners, to, when the fair catch is called, one of the gunners' responsibility is to secure the, the, the punt returner, but when the fair catch is called in a deep, deep pinning situation, you want to have eyes for the football. And uh, it yeah, took a while you, for the, as, to yeah, Once it. you see that, that hand go up for a fair catch, you run right past that guy and you get your feet on the goal line. Yep. So what a play there on special teams. Now the Cardinals are going to be starting from their own one. Their worst starting field position yet so far in this game on their third drive. And we'll see if the Thunder defense can take advantage. What a chance here for the Thunder. Yeah, it's a great opportunity to make some disruption in the backfield. I'm going to try to run it. And they'll hand it off once again. It is going to be Joe Sacco continuing to feed it to him. Actually, excuse Sean me, it was Sean Allen who took the carry, not Sacco. Apologies for that. 
and the other good running backs. And the Cardinals this season, obviously they don't have Ethan, Ethan Greenfield, who was just dominant, won the G Gallardi Trophy, given to the best player in Division Three. So they've sort of, sort of used a running backs by committee approach. Of course, Sacco has most of the carries, but going with Sean Allen, Darius Bird, and Charles Coleman, they've also, as well as Jordan Chisholm, they, those guys have also contributed to this rushing attack. And meanwhile, here is once again Sean Allen with some space. Allen going to pick up a first down across the 20. So the Cardinals, whoever they seem to give the football, it's been run after run after run and continued success. He's definitely got some speed. You get get him in space. He can make a guy miss. It's a great run. I mean, Wheaton brought with the, one, the run blitz again, blowing up the guard pole. But it was a misdirection play where they came out the backside with, with the running back. Now from the 22-yard line for the Cardinals. And so far, the rushing defense for the Thunder struggling to stop these running backs. And Lanin has not. I mean, he's carried the ball once. And I bet Thunder have eyes on him. So it's allowed some big runs for Sacco and Allen. And now here is Luke Lanin going to take off and run. Lanin cuts it back. He's got some space. Lanin across midfield. Look at him go. Instead, the 35, the 30, the 25, the 20, the 15, the 10, the 5. And he's going to take it all the way for the rushing touchdown. Talk about Luke Lanin with the wheels and the Cardinals storming up in this one here in the first quarter. That's really a pretty, I mean, that's a nice play by, by Luke. But you just, he's running away from guys. They're, there's, there's no, lots of space known. Again, untouched. That's the third touchdown. All three touchdowns from North Central, untouched. Yeah, well, I think North Central, on top of building at the line of scrimmage where those guys are winning the game up front right now against the defense, they've got speed at the skill position players, and speed kills. You get that on the edge, and they've shown that that's the way they're making plays out here. Extra point by Reinach. It is good. So talking about Luke Lanin from last season, rushed for over 1,000 yards. 1,034 yards, 13, 13 rushing touchdowns, and so far this season has two rushing touchdowns. Now that'll be his third as he shows off the wheels just so fast and has gashed this Thunder defense. Yeah, situationally, I think we had everyone up in the line of scrimmage showing a man, man free look right across the, the board, and then at the snap of the ball, we were rotating back. That safety on this side of the field was backpedaling at the line of scrimmage, and I think speed and a backpedal beat the angle. and. And it's, I mean, it, I, it's a smart play call, right? You, we've started to bring guys into the box. We're bringing pressure. So you start running that read option, that RPO, and you get that extra runner and yep. the quarterback. And you it's, count for the quarterback. Yep, you can't account for the quarterback. By the way, the, that 1,034 rushing yards he had last year set the single season record for rushing yards by a quarterback in North Central history. It's not. So this is a crucial possession for the Thunder here. Obviously, 21-7, but you got the ball. Let's see how we respond, and Kortnoven. here is the return. It's going to be Seth Kortnoven who meets a wall. Kortnoven gained tackle at about the 25-yard line, and North Central faithful came 20 minutes north. Some sitting in the stand, some of them right there on the sideline, just like two years ago when these two teams met. Very passionate about there. Yeah, so I think just like last last drive, we have it's got to stay on schedule. And we've got to make plays. So whether it's a false start penalty that we overcome, you know, every night everything's going to go your way. But no. you've got to execute in those situations when it's third and manageable. And uh, we need to stay on schedule here. So let's see what Coach Scott dials up. Third drive now of the Thunder in this quarter. 157 before the end of the first quarter. And here's a handoff inside, getting it across the 25. Going to be brought down. At about the 27, Giovanni Weeks. Love the commitment to the run, though. Here, if you're the if you're the Wheaton offense here, you, you stay with with what what you what got you here, and you know it's a positive first down play. I mean, it's two yards on first down, but you'll take that every time. Well, I mean, and, and you really need so, sometimes you know football is a team game, 11 guys in the field, but there's also 22 guys. This is one where the offense says, "Hey, defense, we're going to pick you up here. We're going to control the, down the field, control yep. the line of scrimmage, get some points." So gain of two on first down, second down, and eight now. From the 27-yard line here is Thorson looking to throw a pass out of the backfield, and it is Giovanni Weeks. He can run. He can catch out of the backfield as he's tackled, sliding out of bounds. It's going to bring up third down and about short now for Wheaton. That's a great second down play. I mean, they're they're committed to stop the run there after we've, we've hit him a couple times, and Gio's a great pass catcher out of the backfield. That's where he's really not only a physical runner, but you can get him the ball in space with little flat routes, he can make it happen. So in a great position here at third and two, third and three. I'd take a shot right here. A lot of play calls at third and two, third and yeah. three. 
So from the 33-yard line, by the way, Giovanni Weeks in his career, 4,000 scrimmage yards. He's had an amazing career. And they will feed it to Weeks, trying to get the first down. Able to slip away from a tackle. And the question, does he get the first down? We'll see what the so far right short. judge says. Yeah, we're going for this. Yeah, they spotted him just short. <clears throat> a, a phenomenal effort by Gio to take what could have been a tackle for loss. They did gain a half a yard. It's going to be fourth and inches. So it looks like Coach Scott is electing to keep his offense out on the field, going for it on fourth down. It's where, you know, again, this is just philosophy, but me, I just would love to get under center and just fall forward. Perhaps the Thunder could be trying to draw the Cardinals offside. Now the play clock at six. They will snap it, and it's going to be Giovanni oh, Weeks. Does wow. he have the first down is the question. He did get it. And it looks yep. like he does. That's what the near right judge says. Great play by the defensive tackle. Yeah. Well, Igbo is making go. plays, too, on the defensive end. He was there, but yeah. Gio just refused to go down, spinning, yeah, body he got control. It. That is the end of the first quarter of play. So the Cardinals' number one ranked team in the country so far, their rushing attack, again, the eighth best in the country, has been unstoppable as they lead 21-7 to at the end of the first quarter. Now, I think if you wrap up the first quarter, Wheaton obviously knew that defensively it's going to be a task to stop this potent running game from, from North Central, but you've got the ball, you've been able to move it, you are in a position to make it a one-score game with this possession. And ultimately, I don't think anyone thought they were going to come out here and hold the game to a low-score game with North Central. So I think you got to be happy with it. Obviously, you want to clear some things up on defense. But uh, the Wheaton Thunder are in a good place to take take some points here on this drive if they can keep the change moving. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. you got to figure out a way to get a stop. I mean, and it, it's not even close to having a stop. I don't think North Central's run. Did, did they have a third down in, in the first quarter? I'm not sure they did. So it's not just that. Um, you got to clean some things up. You got to figure out a way to get a stop, a negative play, something. You know, North Central's not beating themselves. They got to make a play on defense and get the ball back. And you're right, they did not have a single third down attempt at all. They pretty much just kept getting run after run on first down and second down. By the way, Timothy Financial Council is proud to support Wheaton College Athletics. Their offices in Wheaton and Chicago have financial planners who are very invested in the Wheaton community and want to help clients plan for the future. Interested in learning more about how hourly financial planning can help you? Check out their website at timothyfinancial.com. Well, I think one thing maybe Wheaton can hang their hat on is, you know, time of possession doesn't matter when you're losing, but when you have the ball for 10 minutes in the first quarter, you know, maybe by the fourth quarter they're a little tired. <laughs> Fifth play of the drive, by the way, for the Thunder, starting the second quarter as we flip field positions from their own 36-yard line. It'll be Giovanni Weeks in the backfield, and they will hand it off to Weeks. And that Cardinals defense stiff, not really allowing anything there. Yeah, so it's one-yard gain. I think sometimes it can feel like not much is happening there, but it's a positive play. You know, just like last series there or the last possession on the the first three plays we got a couple yards on first down set you up for a play on second down offensive line still moving the line of scrimmage at least a yard or two downfield it was actually henry brown who took the carry apologies for that and it was dan lester the senior the all-american considered one of the best defensive players in the country i'm excited for him to graduate <laughs> it's gonna be second down and nine from the 37 yard line now and once again they'll hand it off to Henry Brown, who's immediately dragged down, absolutely nowhere to go. Tough play there. I mean, they had more guys at the point of attack. I don't know if we had some miscommunication up front, but they had unblocked players there, and the two that were there shed their block, and no tough sledding in that situation. Yeah, it is. Again, we're not great getting out on the edge against these guys the last few years. Well, they got team speed, and like you said earlier, coming downhill down the, the middle of the defense is a far better way to play to our strength than trying to beat them on the edge. Now you got... Uh, this is where North Central can get creative. Now you see them moving all around, pre-snap. Looks like they got some guys coming. Third down and 10. Thunder, by the way, one of four on third down so far. Here's Thorson feeling the pressure, has to get it away. Pass is going to be incomplete. Some miscommunication with Seth Kortenhoven as Julian Bell, that All-American safety in coverage. Yeah, that's a, that's a great play by, you saw they brought a, a stunt up front with the defensive line, brought two linebackers, one off the edge and one looping around. and. They got it blocked up pretty good, but it, it heated up Thorson a little bit, and he was just off target. Yeah, he stood tall in the pocket. It's yeah. tough. He's got a lot of that pressure coming to his you know, backside. He's trying to throw that football, and I think that's really why it sailed on him, just because he got the whole pocket collapsing. So after one first down, the Thunder going to be forced to send it back to North Central, which has scored a touchdown in all three of their offensive series. Uh-oh. Good punt. Right. And the punt mm. will go out of bounds. I'll see where the referees want to spot it. 
I have to say, great college football atmosphere on homecoming. Both teams and both crowds are cheering on their team in a beautiful sunny day. I think when you look at opportunities to play this game, you look for opportunities. Obviously, there's a big game, but just the environment, the atmosphere, small college football. For many of the fans that are here, but even for the faithful Wheaton Thunder fans that are all across the country, give a shout out to the Rochester faithful that are <laughs> tuning in here. Uh, I know some future Wheaties are up there uh, supporting the Thunder today. I also want to say just real quick, too, for those alums that couldn't make it in, we missed you. It's been a great, uh, both Chris and I, former players, had a great turnout this, this year with some alumni. Uh, please come next year. So now the Cardinals on from their own 28-yard line. They'll stay on the ground game. Back to Joe Sacco, already over 100 yards and still churning those legs. This is where, as a defense, you have to be opportunistic. You got to get those turnovers. The, if you think back to the Bell game over the years, there have been huge plays. North Central going into the end zone, fumbling the ball, uh, just getting your hand on a, on a quarterback who's carrying the ball a little loosely, get it to pop out, get a fumble. That's what we're looking for here. Not getting a lot of stops, so you gotta you got to create a turnover. Yeah, when those guys are in space, chance to put a hat on a football, put a punch on a football, you never know what's going to happen. But a lot of play calls for second and four. So gain of seven on first down, second down and three now. Sacco in motion, they'll do a little toss pass and a oh lot no. of space, and look at this. Charles Coleman's off to the races. Coleman inside the 30, the 25, the 20. Coleman, another, this time a passing touchdown. That's a great play call. Well, but if you just look at the way they block it up, you do have some bad angles, right? If you're trying to get over the top, you can't go underneath the block and try to get there. You're getting beat with speed. So we got DBs and linebackers not taking great angles there. and. Well, and they also, with the, the, the initial play, they faked to the running back in the flat and then brought out of the slot the running back and did a little pitch to him. So you, you also had bad angles. You also had better numbers. Yeah. I mean, football's just about having more numbers at the right spot of attack. So we were, our angles weren't great, but we were blocked up, hat on a hat. And how about the freshman, Charles Coleman? That's his first career touchdown. Came in this game with only 62 yards on seven carries and there it officially counts as a passing touchdown since it was a little pop pass that you know Mahomes likes to do and once again and you can also call it an extension of the run whatever you want to call it but once again just the Cardinals just have not have been unstoppable rushing the unstoppable football. this is uh, this impressive is incredible it's impressive <laughs> I mean that was that was second was that second and eight or second and second four. and second and four second, yeah yep. To your point, Chris, there are a lot of calls for second and four. A lot of, a lot of play calls <laughs> for second and four. But if you can control the line of scrimmage, I mean, what causes a, what causes a problem on a play like that is a defensive lineman disrupting that, 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 that motion pop pass in the backfield, making him disdirection. But when you can catch that coming downhill and you've got an extra running back out in the flat blocking the, the flowing linebacker, it's a great play call. Yeah. This is a point of game where you're digging deep, right? You're... You get ready for the football season for nine months so that you can hopefully can play for three. And this is the biggest game on your calendar for Wheaton, so you're trying to dig deep here. Yeah, I think, I mean, if, if you're the offense mentality here, it's like you don't need to do anything that is outside of yourself. We've shown that we can run the football. Uh, we've shown that we can complete passes. You just, you got to execute when the play's there in front of you and keep yourself on schedule. Don't get behind the chains. So back deep to the receive it is going to be Jack out. He'll just take a knee into the end zone, and so now it'll be the Thunder for their fourth offensive series of the half. And they scored that touchdown on their first drive, but it's been punt and punt. They have not put up any points so far. Yeah, I think we're now at the, you, you still are sticking with your strategy of leading with the run, being methodical with the offense, trying to be physical at the point of attack. Really, you're just trying to steal one possession here uh, at the end of the half, knowing that you get the ball to, to start the second half, right? You're still not out of it. You still got a chance to to get back in it here with a good drive, uh, eat some clock. Put an eight-play drive here together, choose some clock, put some points on the board. It's a two-score game. I mean, as dominant as North Central's been with their offense, that's still very much where you can be in striking distance. Now from the 25-yard line, some movement up front, and it's going to back the Thunder five yards. A tough start to a drive. I mean, yeah, you know, no. every big start. Game. Number 18 in the offense, five-yard penalty, first down. Not sure what happened there if that's just uh, – Trevor Gabriel didn't snap the ball, or it looked like everybody went but him. Yep. And one of those everyone but the center yeah. referee calls That's right. that you see. Yeah, I mean, it's age-old football. It's penalties, turnovers, and special teams. And right now, I think you could put a wash on the, the special teams, but no turnovers. But penalties have definitely been hurting the Thunder so far. And he moves them back five yards, first and 15 after the full start. 
Here's now Ben Thorson looking to throw, steps up, lobs it downfield, but it's going to be overthrown incomplete for Caleb Titherington. You could tell Thorson felt Titherington was going to push that a little deeper. He kept the route flat, and the flat defender was trailing him, didn't know he was there and was underneath. If he could drift a little deeper downfield, may have an opportunity. There's definitely some green grass. Yeah, it's a nice throw. That's one, too. The offensive really held up well there. They brought five, had it well protected. Thorson now 7 of 12. For 57 yards throwing here in the first quarter once again. Looking to throw and setting up a screen with Giovanni Weeks looking for some space. Weeks across the 20, going to be upended at the 24-yard line. Great job by the pursuit of the North Central D. That looked like they had some. Had something there. Yeah, and, and you get a nice play uh, by number seven getting off a block. It was Angelo Cusimano who had an interception the last time these two teams played. Making the tackle third and 11 now from the 24. Thunder must get to their own 35 to pick up a first down. And so far on third downs, one of five, and once again, as we said, third and long. Yeah. Not as many play calls on third and 11. Especially going up against a very good North Central defense that can get to the quarterback with only four people. Rush this three. time bring three. Here's Thorson to the near side. That pass is going to be incomplete, though. It was Seth Kortenhoven who was the intended receiver. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, that's the right read, right? He... he they kind of jumped the short player. It's a, it's a tough throw long all the way across the field, but Luke just or uh, Ben just overshot it. Yeah, they had him well blocked up. It's tough. Anytime you only bring three, you know there's a lot of guys floating out there, but that corner route is a soft spot in the defense, and those are plays in a game like this that you would... you got to make. you got to make. you got to make that throw. So the Thunder going three and out now, and that's now three consecutive drives, failing to score any points. And here is now the return for North Central. That will go... In this, into the North Central stands, I mean, it's rather a, the sidelines, actually. Yeah, in a situation like that, you got to try to flip the field. Uh, that punt came off more of like a, a a pinning punt into the the red zone. It had a lot of rotation on it. It must have just come off the foot. It's a thirty yard, thirty, punt. yeah, twenty five, thirty yard punt. So North Central is going to come out with the ball here in great field position obviously that hasn't been a, a challenge for them as they've been executing on big plays routinely we'll continue to see if there's an answer here for what we can do to put them in any situation of third down where they can get off the field as a defense 11 plays for 311 yards for north central through just over one quarter of play and three rushing touchdowns in that little pop pass passing touchdown from Lanen. And this time it'll be Lane going to keep it himself. Nice cut. Lane in trying to get to the edge. And there goes Luke Lane in showing off the burst. There is a flag on the play. We'll see who that one goes against. Personal foul. Face mask, number 42 of the defense. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. Automatic first down. That's just amazing. Great play by the quarterback there to. Make a guy miss and get a 15-yard. Yeah, he's a great jump cut. I mean, yeah. just as a running back, he got stymied at the line of scrimmage, jump cut, got yeah. the edge. And I think that's a situation where as a defender, you just feel the speed of the game getting away from you. And rather than give up maybe a touchdown on the edge, you, you grab and you get face mask. Yep. And the penalty goes against the junior out of Roswell, Georgia, Caleb McClung. And so now moves the ball all the way to the Thunder 45. And the Cardinals look with their fifth consecutive drive with a touchdown. And this time it will go to Sean Allen on the far side. Allen still on his feet, tackled from behind by Jalen Ferlita. we got multiple linemen pulling out there on the edge, getting yeah. in space. I mean, first contact's there at five yards. Yeah, no, that's... It is impressive. I mean, these guys are big athletic offensive linemen that are... Moving people out of the way. We just got that 73 came in here. And we were talking at the start of this broadcast about the battle of the trenches. The Cardinals, you know, they're going to be emphatic about running that football before they start passing. And so far, they have ran it with absolute success. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's right. Second down, or rather another second down and short. A handoff goes. And it yeah. should, should move the chains, and look, it will. Look like they brought in 73 Cortez Jones there to play fullback. Obviously a, a big young man, listed at 6'2", almost 300 pounds. Comes in as a freshman, but had him in the backfield here as he comes off and just used him to blow up that hole and make space. So I think at this point here, if you're Wheaton, you're like, hey, let's make him have a 
a passing touchdown here at this point. At the, you've, they've run about 15 plays, 14 of which are runs. And so for D'Angelo Hardy, the All-American receiver, the best receiver in the game, it's like, I don't even have a catch because yeah. we are able to run the football so well. Here's Sean Allen again, plowing his way inside the 20. And you know, you know they got a team first mentality. They love nothing more than winning a football game. But uh, as one receiver <laughs> to another, I know he wants to touch the football as well. Uh, he's got bigger things on his mind as a team winning, winning the games. But uh, it's always fun to touch the football in a game. Especially like watching him. He's a very fun player to watch as well. And Hardy getting some NFL recognition, perhaps as once he does graduate, he is second all-time in receiving yards for the Cardinals. 3,076 yards receiving as well as second. For North Central. Oh, what a great and now play. here's Luke Lanin taking off and running. Lanin is going to pick up the first down. The mobility of Luke Lanin moving the chains for the Cardinals. I give him great presence. Uh, Absolutely. Great credit there. Good pocket presence. We had an unblocked edge rusher coming. He stepped up, but then he slid a little in the pocket, opened the door, and then he was out the backside for the first down. Really, really great play from the quarterback there. Yep. So it's now first down and goal from the Thunder 10 as the Cardinals. Trying to extend this lead and push it further and further away for the Thunder. Now the clock dipping under nine minutes before the intermission. We have Sean Allen in the backfield, first down in 10. And they'll give it to Sean Allen. There we go. And this time the Thunder defense for once in a while actually able to stop the rushing attack. Yeah, they continue to rotate guys there in the backfield of the fullback position at 89. Uh, Bobby Bemmer there, tight end, Luke Jr., 6'2", 240. But they're putting some size there in front of that lead blocker. That time, give De De Whedon's defense credit. Meet the ball at the line of, line of scrimmage and, and making a tackle in the backfield. That's great. Everything gets compressed here where, you know, if you're that DB, you don't have to guard the back of the end zone. Everything gets a little bit tighter here. This is where you can hopefully create a mistake. Jordan Chisholm is in the game, by the way, for the Cardinals. D'Angelo Hardy to the top of your screen. Here's oh, Lane in. Look that's at him a hole. Lane in. Trying to buy some time. Lane in. He goes down all the way back at the 25-yard line. I think Wheaton would take the sack over that, but the running yeah. back stepped up, completely whiffed on the block, and just tackled the blitzing linebacker. Who's that? It's mm -hmm. Isaac Parrish. Oh, yeah. Who leads the team in sacks with one and a half. Gets there in the backfield and now brings up third and long and chance once again for the Thunder to get off the field and only force a field goal attempt. Great blitz by Virgil Cannon yeah. there to disrupt Great. the play. Got horse collared. I mean, who's 22? Yeah. Are you talking about for the Cardinals? Uh, Jordan Chisholm, yeah, just straight tackled Virgil. I mean, he beat him on the block. And, but you take a sack for loss there. It's third and goal here. Great so, play by the defense. Thunder crowd, which has pretty much been quiet throughout this game, finally now loud and on their feet, third down and long. And they're going to set up a screen with Sacco. Joe Sacco with a nice cutback flag on the play, by the way, as Sacco all the way down inside the 20, nearly the 10. Here's a tough one here. I think you, if I'm if I'm Coach Scott, I think I take this penalty. You want as opposed to fourth and goal from the 10. And Coach Scott and Coach Nightingale talking agree. it over. Because the hold you was in the backfield. The hold was in the backfield, so you're gonna mush it back on the edge of field goal range, I think. If you it do. should be from the from the previous spot. Okay. Holding, offense number 58, 10-yard penalty from the previous spot, third down. I think that might have been, I mean, it was clearly holding, but I think that was a little bit of response to yeah, probably. the blatant hold that was missed on the previous play. It goes against the right guard, the first team all CCIW, Sam Pryor, the junior out of Sugar Grove, Illinois. So now you take the penalty, hope you make a play here, get an incomplete pass, you got to kick a 47-yard field goal as to... And with the pressure, the pressure we've had on the special teams for uh, extra point sure. kicks, I mean, that kick's got to be a little lower. I mean, this is a situation to flip the script here, get some momentum. And if you're the Cardinals, I don't think you're thinking about touchdown. You're just trying to think, let's get as much field position back. Let's try to get as much yardage back so that we can have a manageable field goal. Yeah. Third and goal from the 30 now. Here's Lean in on a four-man oh. rush. Lobs it down. Field pass it. Oh! Almost intercepted. Oh. Riley oh, Schwartz had a chance at it. You know, I, I mean, that's Riley, a great Riley, play by the receiver. Yeah, I mean, but Riley Shorts, I mean, he he was playing zone coverage in his drop, eyes on the quarterback the whole way. I mean, Lanon stared that one down. Yeah, that, that's where we go. Thank you, receiver. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Jack Romo I mean, really saved what could have been a pick, and so instead it will be a fourth down, and the Cardinals are going for it. Uh, it would be, as you say, do not jump. Forty-seven yard field goal. I think they, a couple things. Historically, I don't know if they've done it with Lennon. They used to 
do a little pooch kick from the, the quarterback position, too, in these situations. Sean Ryan, by the way, who's a kicker, his largest is yep. longest field goal is from 28 yards, and there will be a pooch kick. Great punt. And what a play there by play. Luke Lane and inside the 10, and it'll be brought, and it's going to be marked at the four yard line. But I, you know, stepping back a couple of plays, great job by. Uh, Coach Scott and Coach Nightingale to, to, to get together to s decide, hey, do we want to take this penalty? Do we want to take this and, and make them play third down again? Take the penalty, almost get a pick, Keep and get a stop. off the board. I mean, that, I mean, that's, once again, Wheaton, Wheaton can move the football here. I yeah. think you come back to the running game more inside the tackles instead of on the edges. You've got six and a half minutes left in this game. You put together a drive here to chew this clock. Put some points on the board and bring it back to in reach. I mean, yep. that's that's what you would want situationally in a football game here. It all starts with the first down. So it's so it's going to be Ben Thorson from his own end zone. At their own three-yard line. He gets soft coverage. That safety is just all downhill. And he'll hand it off inside. There we go. There we go. It'll be Great Giovanni Weeks. Yep. You talked about, I mean, the Thunder being overwhelmed so far in this first half. And just, if you're the Wheaton offense, if you're Wheaton in general, the offense and defense, you're, sure. you're just basically saying, hey, we just need to calm down, yep. maybe a little bit too excited, and we've been missing on some easy plays. Yeah. yeah. And the offensive line is the strength of this, this Wheaton football team. So they've got playmakers on the edge. Gio, obviously, I mean, he's first team all-conference, notable player. He's a returning, you know, playmaker. You've got the, the guys to do it. 10 carries, 37 yards for Giovanni Weeks. And once again, going with that motion, it was a gain of five on first down. And now here is Thorson looking to throw left. Thorson going to dial up the deep ball for Seth Kortenhoven, but the pass is going to be incomplete. Yet Ethan Groek in coverage, and it's going to bring up third down. Yeah, Thorson's, I think, making the right reads. I like that they finally took a shot here, tried to go for the deep play. I like that he missed to the outside and not back inside to the safety, but you got to give your receivers a chance, and he's really, on these last three longer throws, just been a little bit too aggressive with the ball. Yeah, and it's body language, both quarterback and receiver. They seem to be a little bit on the disconnect is the, the communication there as to where the ball is coming on that play. So after the incompletion, it's now third and five from their own eight. Thunder one of six on third down so far here in the afternoon. Here is Thorson given time past the outside, a far side, and it's going to be caught for a first down. That's a great curl flat concept. I mean, Ben Bunga draws a lot of attention for both the corner and the safety and the linebacker, and really nobody picks up the flat. No, the flat defender really hasn't picked up Jessica. That's the third or fourth time yeaton yeah. has been able to exploit the weak side flat. I well, mean, and think, that's the way North Central wants to play, right? They're not going to bring a whole lot of heat. They're not going to put a ton of guys in the box. They're going to make you do that for 15 plays and say you're not going to do that. You're not going to do it without making a mistake. Second grab for Ben Jessica in the half. Off the play fake. Here is Thorson oh. once oh, again. Come on. The throw. It's going to dial up the deep ball for Seth Kortnovin. Oh, contact and a flag. That's really a pretty good job behind the safety. Yeah, yeah he just was a Williams. touch, a touch early there. Yeah, Jawan Williams, as well as the All-American Julian Bell in coverage, but there was contact and it should move the chains. Like Kortnovin. Best interference. Defense number one. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. And that's how you get the penalty called when you go. He went up if, to high point exactly. the football. That's what you coach a kid to do, and he, he did it. Now, without it, I don't think they may have given him a shot on that because he that ball was a little high, but he did a he did exactly as he was coached. He's a great, great young player. Huge play there to get out of a third and third and long situation. And Coach Scott, by the way, was talking about Seth Cordova being one of those underrated receivers for the Thunder. The transfer out of Coastal Carolina has been making some big plays, including a 162-yard performance on 10 catches there we go. last catch, week as they'll we carry with Giovanni Weeks stays on his feet. Weeks right near the 40-yard line on that play. Yeah, plenty of time here as Chris and I are big-time, big-time uh, youth flag football coaches. And right now we're thinking about <laughs> doubling up, right, getting the, the old double dip where yeah. you score. Don't leave a whole lot of time in the first half and get the ball back at the beginning of the second half. Yeah, it's called the Aaron Rodgers defense. You just never let the other team have the football. That's right. right? I mean, don't give them the ball back. And uh, this is the way Wheaton wants this drive to go. Second and third, a lot of, lot of play calls for this situation. So now from the 40-yard line, Jack Allen, by the way, in motion. Play clock at 11 with Thorson out of the shotgun. Looking to throw. Thorson fires pass in traffic, and it's going to be incomplete for Allen. And you saw... B.J. Umdamchik, who's just so frustrated, he, had, he almost had that play. Yeah, it's an interesting play call there. I mean, they, they faked a run fake even on the line. We're moving people as if it were a run play, but 
Uh, and North Central looked like they were in man coverage. They were not fooled at all by that play. I think the, the, running that one. the running back in the flat was wide open. Now Thorson obviously delivering the ball quick. I think Wheaton might come back to that, to the running back in the flat. So I think, Chris, to, to your point earlier, that North Central's really been leaving that, that flat to actually both sides of the field here, but certainly to the weak side flat. Fourth down, third down and three, seventh play of the drive. And they'll hand it off Giovanni Weeks. He is not going to get the first down, so the Cardinals defense makes a stand. And now I have a question. Do the Cardinals, or sorry, do the Thunder think about going for a fourth down? There's no thought about it. They're going. Yeah, at this point, I mean, at 28-7, I mean, you really, you, you get the ball back to North Central. I mean, it doesn't matter where you give them the ball at this yeah, point. They're, yeah. they're pretty Field much. Field position's yeah. not the, the game here. So I think you put it on your offense. You say, this is the strength of our team. If we're going to win this football game, we got to win this play. we got to win this down. Fourth and officially one yard. Thunder operating out of their 12 personnel with one running back, two tight ends, forcing under center. And we give to Giovanni Weeks. And yeah, does he have it is the question. I'm not sure if he does. You know, it's tough. There's it's a slow developing run play in a short yarded situation. And still discussion on whether the Thunder picked up the first down. Cardinals, of course, saying it's a turnover on downs. Wheaton saying, of course, we got the first down. It looks like the 43-yard line, they're going to come out and measure it, but it looks like the 43-yard line is the line to gain, and they've got the ball currently spotted just short of the 43-yard line. Yeah, you know, it's easy to, to second-guess and have, you know, you got your best player, your All-American center, and you got a pretty big quarterback. Mm -hmm. Just sneak the ball. It, it's one of those situations, this is always a debate, right? I mean, it's like you get the ball in short yardage situation. I just, I'm a fan of a quicker hitting yeah. run play in a short yardage, especially when you need inches. We weren't talking yards. And yeah, I think a, gonna, yeah, it's going to be see short. if they need the note card, by the way, to measure if he got the first down or not. And it's going to be short. North Central with a huge stand on defense. I, yeah. So a drive that started from their own three yard line stalls at the their own 42 and now North Central with 3.51 left to go before the first half is now thinking, man, we can get that knockout punch and put the Thunder away. Yep. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, I, and I would do it right here. I would take that shot right here. Yeah, the thing, I mean, for the success they've had, I mean, we say take that shot. They could do that with a handful <laughs> of plays point. and it could be out of the backfield and it yeah, could be down point. the field. I mean, they, they've got playmakers on the edges, got offensive linemen that can block it up. So we'll see what North Central tries to do here. But I think what we've seen, though, is you got to be able to put them behind schedule, right? Yep. If you get them behind schedule and you can keep the quarterback in the pocket, you at least have a chance. But that's the that's been the problem. And they'll hand it off. It's there we go. There we go. Great tackle. Nice. There, there we go. Gonna be made. It was Charles Coleman, by the way, who took the carry. And just a point of note, Joe Sacco for the Cardinals, six carries, 138 yards, averaging 23 yards per carry. Yeah, he's like, why can't I get any carries? I, he got them only in the first quarter. <laughs> Luke Wayne, by the way, 102 yards and one rushing touchdown, so two runners above 100 yards. Well on their way to 200. Great play by Clay Campbell there as the safety coming up and filling. I mean, they, that's what we're going to see. Chris, I mean, that's what they're going to do. They're going to just start bringing guys and bringing guys and say, we're going to give up a 50-yard bomb that you threw it because yep. you run it all over us. But would you love that? that was a great physical tackle. Yep. I mean, a talented running back. He got him on the ground and yep. definitely was the aggressor on that play. Yep. Coleman stays in the game on second down Sorry. and 12 and a huge nice gain for Charles Coleman who plows Short, up though. to the 35-yard line. You know, if you're going to blitz, you got to hit somebody. Yep. <clears throat> you see the Thunder, they know they oh, have Oh, it's to tough. Stop. Yeah. You see the Thunder, they're trying to stop this running attack. And mm -hmm. we talked about at the top of the broadcast, perhaps will Coach Nightingale play more, bl run more run blitzes, play yeah. more cover one. And they've done that, but the Cardinals are just that much better off offensively. Yeah, it seems to be the case. Yeah, but Virgil Cannon did a great job in the flat there, getting off the block, making a play. Obviously, he's not hitting the guy until six yards, but uh, that, that's something we weren't seeing earlier, is getting off blocks. and Big third down situation here. I, I, think, you're looking to get, yeah, here. I think you're looking to get the quarterback out on the edge here. They're down in two, oh. and a big first down carry. Nice and job. And move the chains for the Cardinals. Charles Coleman, 6'2", 216 as a back. Yeah, he's, he's a big dude. Yeah. 
And again, we talked about the Cardinals. They don't have Ethan Greenfield, but they've been using a variety of backs. Sean Allen, Darius Bird, of course, Jordan Chisholm, Charles Coleman who just took that carry. And don't forget Joe Sacco. And yeah. don't forget as well the legs of Luke Lane, and they can do it all. Yeah, that, it's, that's a good point. That's a good point. I mean, they've been able to replace Greenfield's production with a stable of backs that really do, you know, Greenfield could do it all, but they got a back that can hit you with a home run hitter. They can pick up a one or two yards. They got them all. Clock dips under two minutes now before the intermission, and they'll once again hand it off to Coleman. Breaks the tackle. Charles Coleman inside the five. Another huge run and just gashing this Thunder's defense. Yeah, we were giving props to the, the bevy of backs in the backfield, but you got to give credit. Oh, the, reason, yeah. the reason that's possible is because of the five guys they have up front. And uh, we've mentioned, you know, the talent they have coming back, but they've been able to, to recruit and yep. to bring kids up and coach them up, and they step in in their moments. They're making plays. Yeah, it's really impressive. So it's now first down and goal from the one. 90 seconds, less than 90 seconds before halftime. A little surprise, no timeout by Wheaton. Though. Yeah, both teams do have all three of their timeouts. Now the clock dips under 115. Lane and now the shotgun, and they'll hand it off. And does he have the touchdown? North Central says oh, yes. Yeah. Line judge has him spotted a yard, half yard short. Uh, Who is yep. that? Virgil Cannon making a great play coming off the edge. Helmet came off, though. He's yeah, got to take a play off. out. But he, I mean, he made contact in the backfield. Credit, credit North Central running back there. That wasn't Coleman. Who, who it was Jordan there? Chisholm who took the carry. Chisholm. He kept his legs driving. I mean, maybe it was his elbow. It's hard to see on that angle. His elbow may have just been shy of the goal line. It's now under a minute left to play. Cardinals. Not intend to call a timeout. They want to beat the final team that scores that touchdown and go into the half up 3-5-7. Thunder not using a timeout to stop the clock. Chisholm in the backfield. And they will hand it off to Jordan Chisholm. And he's in for the touchdown. So once again, the Cardinals plow their way through that rushing attack. And it's this time Chisholm banking it in for six. Pretty demoralizing first half here for the for the Wheaton faithful here. That's been uh, all North Central after a strong drive to start the game by the Thunder. And the extra point on the way. It is good. Sean Reinick and a 35-7 stomping of the Wheaton Thunder. And we talked about this matchup being a top 10 North Central, number one ranked team in the country. And for Wheaton, they're good. Yeah. And this game essentially serves as a benchmark because you're going up against the team that won the national championship two out of the last three years. And so far, they have not shown up. Right, let, I mean, let's be clear. This is not something that's unique for North Central. They, they do this on a week-in, week-out basis. So, Yeah, I mean, if you look on that play, Nick Fairley and Gerard Thornton on the interior of that offensive line, I mean, they did what offensive linemen do. They just placed the defensive mm -hmm. line right at the point of attack. And what I will say to the mentality North Central has, I mean, that's – T scoring a touchdown to go up 35-7, to seven, those two guys, as they should have been, were fired up after yeah, that play absolutely. because that's the mentality of a champion, and that's what you love to see in a, a physical football game. Uh, the, the, the challenge that we'd love to see in that response is it's hard when you're, not, when you're not sustaining drives offensively and you're putting your defense back on the field in a game that are a little outmatched. It's, it's one that, that puts you in a tough spot. But props to those two young men. Great play there. Yeah. By the way, stay tuned for the Timothy Financial Council Halftime Show presenting this year's Hall of Honorees, their accomplishments, and legendary performance. That's all coming up at halftime here on the Wheaton Thunder Sports Network. It's a squib kick, and it'll be taken and downed at the 26-yard line. And so that's where Wheaton will start their final drive, likely Ooh, in the late first half. Here. I think it looks like we got a North Central player dumped a Wheaton guy after the play. After the play was over, dead ball. Personal, Personal foul, kicking team number 23. 15-yard penalty from the end of the kick, first down. I would have said that the decision to not take any timeouts kind of said what we were going to do before before they even kicked the ball off. But with a squib kick and then a 15-yard penalty. Yeah, you're going to score here. I mean, you got your, you got your timeouts in your pocket. You got opportunity, and these guys can move the football. So obviously North Central is probably going to say, hey, keep it in front of you. But um, – not all is lost here for the Wheaton offense. No, I, I like the idea of trying to get – well, they don't have Geo in the game here, but I kind of like the idea of trying to get a quick hitter or a, a, like a screen play, something where you can get out in space. Maybe you get, slip a tackle yeah. and you the pick up 15 or 20. Riley okay. McCurry, by the way, was the one who was called for the penalty. The Thunder going to stay on the ground game, and it's going to be Giovanni Weeks looking for some space, and we'll see if Coach Scott wants to use a timeout. Man. And I we, mean, really, in that situation – 
And so far, Coach Scott not opting to call a timeout. It's very surprising to me. I mean, not to take a shot here, try to complete something over the middle. I mean, you got a lot of opportunities with three timeouts. But if you were going to do that, I don't know why you just take a knee. Yeah. And risk perhaps turning the ball over and putting yourself further into a hole. And it looks like a timeout has been taken by North Central, I believe. Yeah. Must not have liked time the... Timeout, uh, North Central, their first charge timeout of Interesting. I don't think Bunga knew what the play call was on the far side of the field, so... I don't think they were planning on running a play. So Coach Spencer opting to call that timeout. Not sure if it's just for show or he's just trying to make the Thunder sweat it out because North Central's been dominant, and yep. so far they've had some swag. It's interesting. The... Uh, both offensive and defensive coordinators, former players for the uh, for North Central, the, actually Chris and I both played against Shane Durkin has really turned into a real nice defensive coordinator for North Central. Those first few years uh, had a hard time matching up with Wheaton. There was some high scoring affairs that Wheaton was able to, to come out ahead of, but really he's done a nice job the last few years of holding this Thunder offense in check. I mean, to Wheaton's no slouch on offense. They have seven points going in. Yeah, if you think back to a couple of those games, they would get their safeties in situations where they were playing man coverage yeah. on some of Wheaton's most talented receivers and you know, phenomenal catches. The guy was there to make the play defensively. We were winning those one-on-one -on -one matchups. Yeah. They don't have to do that now. No, they don't. They don't have to put their safeties in vulnerable positions like that. So the final play is a run with Giovanni Weeks, who cuts it back to the outside. Weeks still going, and he's going to be finally brought down at the 34-yard line, and that will bring us to the end of the first half with North Central spoiling the homecoming festivities. They're up 35-7 to over the 10th-ranked team in the nation. Well, I think if you come into halftime, you're not surprised at the, the power that North Central's come out with in the run game. I think what you, you, you really look at Wheaton and say, hey, in the second half, what we need to do is we need to convert on third down. Okay. And we'll see you at the start of the second half. But first, a special presentation of the Hall of Honor inductories. Actually, we are going, I just got told we're going to a break. So we'll see you at the end of, at the start of the second half here on the Wheaton Thunder Sports Network. Definitely the best place, I mean, for me that I could have ever gone. I look back just making that decision to come to Wheaton, and I'm so grateful, you know, for everyone in that process who helped lead me to Wheaton. I mean, I feel like I've, I've grown in just so many different ways looking back to my freshman year, even just thinking about it now to kind of where I am now and really couldn't have asked for any better place to be. And honestly, again, that's a testament to all the people that I got to surround myself with every day here. When I saw him play in high school, I came back and told Coach Banner, he clearly is talented enough, but he is so small. Growing up as very short, skinny, kind of out of place point guard, I think that's really where you have to have a chip on your shoulder to know and go in that, you know, I've put in the work and I, you know, I deserve to be on the court here. But to be honest, he wasn't the best player on his high school team, and then he wasn't the best player at Wheaton for four years. But honestly, very quickly into his first few practices, I could tell we had somebody pretty special. But he is, by all measure now, one of the all-time great players to ever put on a Wheaton jersey. But he's also going to be the type of young man that you can point back to and say, this is what a star player looks like, behaves like, and acts. I think like looking back early on in my career, I really was like afraid to fail. And that's something that we talked about a lot was throw all your dice out there, put all the chips out there. Um, and don't be afraid to fail. And that's something that we kind of worked on together. And that's really what helped us gain trust. And, and I mean, for me, 
My past, you know, two, three years, I was really able to play more free. When you get a young man like Tyson, you realize you got something pretty special as a coach because in a lot of ways, he became the leader of our team and I just cheered a lot. I mean, he just became somebody who really embodies everything you want from a best player. It's honestly such a great honor and it's something that, I mean, I never really thought was, was on the table. I do describe the Justice Trophy regularly uh, as the Division Three Heisman for men's basketball. It really is in many ways the most prestigious award that is given out in men's and women's basketball at the Division Three level. It not only measures the basketball ability of the men and women at Division Three basketball, but also the academic and service of those individuals. So it's a total award that really encompasses not only just the talent level, but really the most outstanding student athlete in our sport. The initial feelings were just like of gratitude and thankfulness um, to Wheaton, to Coach Shower, to Coach Panner, um, everybody who invested in me during this time. I, I thought he was better than people probably perceived. The fact that he wasn't on any All-America lists, preseason lists, surprised me given the career he had had to that point. And I think he kind of carried a little bit of that chip on his shoulder into this season and used that as motivation. Uh, I'm not going to let anybody outwork me. I think that's really kind of where it comes from and, and stems from is just wanting to win badly enough to where you know, you're know you willing to sacrifice. One of the things I love about Tyson is he averaged over five rebounds a game and he's not much taller than me. Um, so he just simply was relentless uh, to go rebound the basketball and knew that um, given our, our personnel, that was gonna be a potential area of weakness and that he needed to help us there. I honestly believe if I didn't show up for a week, Tyson would have made sure our team did exactly the same thing we did when I was there. And so his legacy will, uh, will be brought up over and over and over again, whether I'm here or not, because he's gonna be on the wall and that trophy's gonna be downstairs. The academic reputation of the institution is so high that the students we get here are really self-motivated to do well academically, that matters to them. So they're typically pretty good students on our roster. And then because of their relationship to Jesus, there's a sense that we should serve others and, and try to model that as Jesus did. Looking back on the Israel trip and Zimbabwe trip, those are two things, um, I mean, just looking back on my career that I will never forget. The relationships that we built out there were just so incredible. Go to the Holy Lands, we're gonna do all those biblical sites and, and really study the Bible uh, on that trip. And our trip to Zimbabwe, which Tyson also went on, we did uh, we did clinics and did service projects, and we are going to visit historical sites and, and do some fun stuff uh, in addition to playing some games. But we're going to do it in a different uh, context than most Division Three basketball programs. Um, there's just so many incredible things about those trips. It makes the whole time at Wheaton, and specifically a Wheaton basketball player, just so special. All he cared about was winning, and that just makes life easy for a coach. Because if your best player cares about that and your best player has his work ethic, it's hard for other people to come up with too many excuses. They sort of follow because he's just such a great leader. I would say be bold. There's a lot of people here on campus who want to enter into a relationship with you. So many programs and things to get involved with, but get involved and be bold in that. And also just be unashamed of who you are. We in, there is no perfect we in student. Rather, we're just a bunch of broken, sinful people who are just in pursuit of a perfect God. Orientation committee, and then also, of course, transfer orientation committee for your transfer. These are people who have been praying for you and are making so many invitations to enter into a relationship with you in that first month being at campus. So I would just say, respond to those invitations, and that goes for OC members as well as the faculty and staff that surround that. I'd say the biggest challenge was how lonely it was. Um, when you first step onto campus, you, you don't have all the friends that you're going to have. And so it took time to just learn how to make friends again. One of the best pieces of advice that I had was to introduce myself to my professors as a transfer. And I was surprised just by how many emails I had from professors just making themselves known. Um, so this is a campus where you're so known and loved. We need engineers who can come up with solutions to all of the multifaceted problems that we face in our world today. People who have the ability to apply math 
science, physics, and engineering concepts to come up with solutions that might affect someone's life in the future for the better. One of the really special things about Wheaton's program is our focus on the liberal arts. So not only are students able to get a robust engineering education, but they're also able to participate in humanities courses, philosophy, and history courses as well. We think that a student who has that liberal arts background is more adaptable. We think that they are going to be more effective, and we think they're going to be more marketable. Through our 3-2 program, through our four-year engineering program, all of our students get training on all of the equipment in our lab. Laser cutters, 3D printers, all the different hand tools and different machinery and equipment that our students might need to be able to create some sort of prototype. So they're not just solving textbook problems, but they actually are given some sort of real-life issue that they're trying to solve. That's when my students really see the importance of engineering and also why it's so important to fill their gaps in knowledge to be able to serve as many people as possible for Christ and for his kingdom. And acting athletics director Mike Schauer are here to welcome this year's Hall of Honor inductees. Our first inductee is Kent Raymond. He is joined by current Wheaton men's basketball coach Mike Schauer. Kent is one of the most decorated Division III men's basketball players in the 2000s, earning multiple All-America awards in three of his four seasons. Kent was twice named to the ESPN the Magazine Academic All-American team, and in 2010 was the first Wheaton student athlete to be honored with the NCAA's Top 8 award. He was recognized as a 2008-09 Division III Player of the Year by D3 News following his senior season and was a three-time selection as the Midwest Region Player of the Year by both D3Hoops.com and the NABC. He is also one of only three players to be named the CCIW Most Outstanding Player three times. In his career, Raymond scored 2,308 points, the second highest point total in school history at the time of his graduation, and a mark that is currently third. Upon his graduation, he was the fourth highest scorer in CCIW history. Kent Raymond. Yeah. Our next inductee is Pete Ittersagen, a coach for the Wheaton football team. Pete is currently with the team and represented here by his family, his wife Annie, and their children, Wilson, Jay, May, and Franny. They are joined by Pete's head coach, Mike Swider. Pete Ittersagen earned eight total All-American awards at Wheaton. In 2006, 7, and 8, he was honored by D3Football.com and is All-American at quarterback and as a returner in 2007 and 8. He also earned All-America accolades from the AFCA as a cornerback in both of those seasons and was named to the AP Little All-America team in 2008. In 2007, he was honored as a CCIW's Defensive Player of the Year, and in 2008, he was named the North Region Defensive Player of the Year by D3Football.com. Over four seasons, Zittersagen played in 46 games, making 252 total tackles. The quarterback had 60 total passes defended in his career, a mark that is ninth in Division III history and was fifth at the time of his graduation. In 2008, he set Wheaton's single-season record for punt return yards, and in both seven and eight, he tied the single-season record for punt return touchdowns. Pete Zittersagen. Next, we have Jeff Rosen, joined by his head coach, Mike Swider. Jeff was an All-American offensive lineman for the Thunder football team, earning first-team All-American honors at guard from Football Gazette as a junior in 2006 and helping Wheaton to the second round of the Division III playoffs. He was twice honored as a D3Football.com All-North Region selection, earning first-team honors in 2006 and second-team in 2007. A three-team All-CCIW selection, Rosen twice earned all first-team All-Conference honors. He was a member of two CCIW championship teams, helping Wheaton to conference titles in 2004 and 2006. In his 2006 All-American campaign, Rosen anchored a Thunder offensive line that ranked 10th in Division Three in total offense. Jeff Rosen. Our next honoree is Andy Studebaker, joined by his head coach, Mike Swider. In 2006, Andy turned in one of the best seasons ever by a Division Three defensive end. He was a unanimous All-American that year, earning the award from the AFCA, D3Football.com, Football Gazette and the Associated Press. Additionally, he was named as the North Region Defensive Player of the Year by both D3Football.com and Football Gazette. That season, he was the NCAA leader with 17 and a half sacks, tying Wheaton's single-season sacks record. 
It was the sixth highest single season sack total in Division III history at the time, and today is 16th in the D3 record books. The 06 CCIW sacks leader, he also led the conference in tackles for loss with 25 and a half. Andy registered 30 career sacks, and averaging over a sack per game, his average is eighth in Division III history and fourth at the time of his graduation. Sudebaker recorded 51 and a half tackles for loss in his career, ranking ninth in Division III history at the time of his graduation, and today it ranks 15th. In April of 2008, Studebaker was a sixth round draft pick of the Philadelphia Eagles, also playing for the Indianapolis Colts and Kansas City Chiefs over his eight year career. Andy Studebaker. Next we have Bethany Barton Massey, joined by her head coach for Wheaton women's soccer, Pete Felsky. Bethany Barton is one of the most decorated defenders in the history of Division III women's soccer. She was a first-team NSCAA Division III All-American in 2006 and 07. In four seasons, Bethany helped lead Wheaton to Division III National Championships in 2004, 2006, and 2007. As a freshman in 2004, she kicked a championship-clinching goal in a penalty kick shootout to defeat University of Puget Sound. She was named the most outstanding defensive player of the Division III tournament at the conclusion of the 2006 and 2007 postseasons. A two-time team captain, she played in 94 matches for the Thunder. Over that time, Wheaton won over 94% of its games with a record of 97-6, and including a 27-0 record in 2007, a record that still stands for the most wins in a season in Division III. Bethany Barton-Massey. Our next honoree is Kira Davis-Wheeler, joined by her head coach, Pete Felsky. Kira Davis was an instrumental member of Wheaton's three NCAA Division III championship teams in 04, 06, and 07. She played in 102 matches in her Thunder career, which at the time of her graduation was a Division III women's soccer record. Davis was named an All-American Defender by D3Kicks.com in 2007, helping lead the Thunder to a 27-0 record. In that flawless season, Kira tallied a career-high seven goals and added five assists. Davis scored nine goals in her career and distributed 10 assists, helping Wheaton to four CCIW championships, including a 27-1 conference record. Kira Davis-Wheeler. Our next honoree, Rebecca Bird Foster, had an outstanding career in the pool for the Wheaton Women's Swimming Program. She is joined by her head coach, John Lederhaus. In 2005, Rebecca earned All-America recognition and was named the MVP of the 2005 CCIW Women's Swimming Championships. She represented Wheaton at the Division III Championships that season, finishing seventh in a 1,650-yard freestyle to earn All-American recognition. Earlier in the 2005 campaign, she won CCIW championships in the 1650 freestyle and the 500-yard freestyle, earning the conference's MVP award. She establishes CCIW records in both of those events. Rebecca Bird Foster. Our next honoree is Caitlin Marco Mulsoff, and she is joined by her head coach, John Lederhaus. Caitlin Marco won five individual All-America awards and five Relay All-America honors in her career. A nine-time CCIW champion in individual races, Marco was honored as the MVP at the 2006 and 7 CCIW championships. As a freshman at the 2005 Division III championships, Marco earned her first All-America award with an eighth-place finish in the 200 Butterfly. In 06, she earned All-America honors in the 1,653 earned doubles helped lead Wheaton the CCIW championships in 2005, 2006, and 2007, and in doing so, she was recognized as this conference championship MVP in both 2005 and 2006. She earned a pair of CCIW singles championships in her career and two CCIW doubles championships. Carly Olson. 
Next, we have Mallory Sullivan Studebaker, and she is joined by Wheaton's current volleyball coach, Stephanie Schmidt. As a junior in 2007, Mallory Sullivan was named to the ABCA Division III All-America team as she helped Wheaton to a 25-9 record. Sullivan also earned all Midwest region honors from the ABCA. She ranked among the CCW top 10 in both kills and digs that season. A three-time all CCW Mallory Sullivan Studebaker. <laughs> Two members of our class were unable to attend today. Catherine Burt Nevin was a Hall of Honor inductee this year, earning four individual All American awards and four All American honors in a week of 2020. Welcome back to the start of the second half here in the battle for the low brass bell number one ranked team North Central commanding 35 to 7 lead over the 10th ranked Wheaton Thunder and so far the first half stats if you look at the rushing it's been dominated by North Central. 294 yards on the ground. Yeah, and well, if you look at that, the 79 yards passing, yeah, I think 70 of them were a, a little pop pass for 70 yards for a touchdown. So to think, you know, close to 370 yards rushing in the first half, if you're North Central, you got to feel really good about that. If you're Wheaton coming out in the second half, I think you tear up the stat sheet and you really challenge yourself to put together a drive here, stay on schedule with the chains, no foolish penalties to get behind and drive down the field and let's put some points on the board and then let's see where the second half goes from here. Yeah, I mean, if you're if you're waiting at this point, you're, this is your resume, right? This is your your ability to, to show to a national stage what you, what you are as a team. And right now you're down 35 to seven. That's not very competitive. Um, you know, you'd love to be a nine and one, one team, but you want to be competitive in, in a game against the top ranked team in the country. Yeah, just to put this into perspective, Luke Laney, the quarterback, has only three of pass Three pass attempts has completed two. He's not had to do that much passing the ball, but again, that rushing attack has been dominant. And you talked about how we, they just need to pretty much tear the script, tear the stat sheets, and just start over, just go play by play. You just want to see some sort of positive momentum going into the second half, and maybe you can build upon that. Yeah, yeah, and I think North Central defensively, they, they really haven't done anything that you didn't know they were going to do. They're going to keep the ball in front of them, and, and I would argue that Wheaton has put themselves in some tough situations, right? We tried to run the ball outside when coming up the middle has really been where the success has come, put us behind the schedule, and then a couple uh, ill-timed penalties and uh, a drop pass really stifled some drives that looked promising. Now, to their defense, that's what North Central's yeah. trying to do. They're trying to make you execute that eight, nine plays in a row to mm -hmm. score, and Ultimately, they're going to say, hey, we can do it better than you can. So we'll see how the Wheaton offense responds. We get a chance to get the ball here with the opening kickoff. And uh, yeah, like you said, play football. Yeah, and just a, I look at this and say, this is a great measuring stick. You are playing the best team in the country. And now you know. Now you know where you're, at least at this point, what you need to work on. Yeah, and I think when you, you, you look at the building that North Central has, has done with their program. They, they had games like this throughout. We get to do it in conference every year, but they, they did it in the playoffs with some heartbreaking losses to Mount Union in Alliance. Uh, they, they proved that they could win against some other teams, but they've, they've shown each year when they come back that they've built a program yeah. that measures to it, and that's what you want. If you want to be the best, you've got to beat the best. Well, and I think you've seen, too, they're now used to playing a top 10 quality opponent four times a year. I mean, they've done it for how many years in a row? They're making deep runs into the playoffs, playing mm -hmm. multiple top caliber teams where Wheaton, it's just not something they've had a lot of lately. When you talk about developing young talent, too, they play an extra five games. It's yeah. like I mean, over three years, they've played a season and a half more football than right. almost every other team in the country. Start of the second half now underway here from Wheaton, Illinois. And here's the turn for Jack Allen. Allen going to get it across the 30 and down to the 35-yard line. By the way, a point to know, Coach Scott, so far in his career, facing his largest deficit at the break, 28 points. He's also now 0-5 when his team is tied 
were trailing at the break. That's a heck of a stat right there. Nicely done. Yeah, what I love uh, to see there, Jack Allen's a player with uh, with some extra explosion. He's got a, he's got some pop in his feet. So good to see him getting the ball in his hands and making something happen. Positive field position to start this drive for the Thunder here on the 35-yard line. It'll be Giovanni Weeks in the backfield with Ben Thorson out of the shotgun. Ben Bonga to the bottom of your screen. We'll see if Wheaton... Can get something positive. See if they can get some momentum going. That's, I think, what, what Coach Scott wants out of his offense. And we'll stay on the ground game. It's going to be Giovanni Weeks looking for some space, running left, and a nice play uh -oh. on the first play. Great and now an injury. On Thank the you, Mike. It's Angelo Cusimano. Looks like he's all right. Yeah, I think he might have just gotten whipped by a leg coming around. Great job by the polling. Pulling offensive lineman there. I didn't catch the number, but really sealing the edge and Geo getting getting out there and the receiver blocking downfield turned what was a four or five yard play into a first down. Great first play out this opening drive for the, the Thunder offense. Love to have been a fly on the wall during halftime to hear what Jesse said to the team. That's a dig deep moment. Now from the 46 yard line, RPO, they'll set up a screen and Seth Kornhoven able to break free. There goes Kornhoven off to the races. Seth Kornhoven down the sideline. And he's going to be pushed out of bounds, but not before getting a huge first down. That's your dude. Yep. I mean, you see, I mean, we talked about this earlier in the, the first half. I mean, he's a player that can make make the first guy miss. Uh, really did it by just being strong on the ball, shucking uh, an arm tackle, and then making, making something happen downfield. Great opening drive here for the Thunder to put themselves in scoring position. So now operating at the Cardinals' 23-yard line as the Thunder quickly flip field position. No Weeks coming. Weeks. In the backfield, Thorson on the run pass. Option has been Bonga. First down and goal. So back-to-back -back good plays for the Thunder offense, showing that they have still safety. some signs of life. Number five, slow to get up there from the safety position. They brought a corner blitz off the weak side. Props to Thorson. I mean, he's a lefty. That, that, that blitz is coming from his back, but really delivered a ball. Only where his receiver can get it, and Bunga, as a, a player, has shown he can make plays down the field and was really physical after the catch, delivering the blow to the safety on the tackle. Gain of 17. Now the Thunder have it first down and goal from the Cardinals' six-yard line, looking for their first touchdown since scoring in the first quarter. That pass is tipped, and it's going to be incomplete in traffic. And it's going to bring up second down. Yeah, that's a great play. As you see here on the replay, what they're trying to do is extend those zones and just have your tight end hitch up right in there, right in the right in the hole and a nice play by the linebacker to get his hand on it yeah they really didn't bite on the run fake that's really your goal there is to get the linebacker to take one step forward by putting the ball in the belly of the back and then pulling it out and hitting the tight end so props to north central for making a play mm -hmm. giovanni weeks in the game second down and six by the way 83 yards in the first half and they will oh, talk to it it giovanni in. weeks yes and he'll score touchdown thunder just a real physical football play right there. He had the receiver cracking down, blocking, uh, blocking on the linebacker, lineman on the edge, and just physically overwhelming the North Central defense on the right side of the ball there in Geo. Too much speed for North Central to handle there. So the Thunder stripped their second half drive, and it's in for six. And by the way, Giovanni Weeks with that run now, 89 yards. He only needed 87 yards to tie Sol Oletechu for the most career rushing yards. Now Giovanni Weeks, he has the record. That's an impressive record. Shola was one heck of a running back. Yeah. A better person. I'm sure he's happy for Gio. Great Extra kick. point is good. And now that, now that will give Giovanni Leach 3,196 career rushing yards. You know, I know Wheaton comes out down 30, 35 to 7 to start this half, but obviously the drive you want to script yeah. to open up. But only, not only that, to, for Gio to break the record, you know, that could happen on the road. In some game where Wheaton's blowing it out, to be at home in front of a homecoming crowd in a physical play like that, that was like an exclamation point That's on right. the career he's had to see an offensive line crushing the right side of the North Central off our defensive line and for him to take it in that to the end zone. It's just a special play. He's a great young man. Yeah. That cuts off a five play, 65 yard drive. Also, Giovanni Weeks won. Rushing touchdown shy of tying Chuck Shane here for the most career rushing touchdowns. And so that will be something that we will be definitely be looking at as this game continues. I know a lot of these kids went through a lot. All their college careers impacted by COVID. Uh, mm -hmm. It was certainly a rough go of it. But to, to think, you know, not on the back end that it was all worth it. But they, they, they're being blessed for the opportunity to play a yeah. couple more years. And fun to watch great players making plays and be rewarded for it. And here is Mateo just to send it away. And inside his own 10, here comes the return for the Cardinals. Yes. And a lap down, back all the way 
inside the 15. Like you said, Tim, I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall. I will say this, Wheaton didn't come out of the second half feeling like they were down 35-7. to seven. You can see the sideline, the energy on that kick coverage. They've definitely been the aggressor here to start the second half. Now the real question will be, like, can we do anything to slow this potent Russian uh, attack down against North Central? Yeah, I thought they started to do a little bit better job, at least of, of being physical at the point of attack. Now, uh, Wheaton was stuffed on, on fourth down, and, and North Central got a short field and got that last touchdown, which could keep, prove to be pretty, pretty large. But I do think the defense started to play a little bit better as we got, got into the second quarter. Yep. I mean, they were put in a tough situation yeah. there. Mark at the 18, not the 15, by the way, in there. And here's a handoff. Oh, and boy. Look at this carry, and still going and mm. finally brought down across the 30-yard line. It's going to be Sean Allen once again who had 24 yards on five carries, did not find the end zone, but it seems like these Cardinals love the end zone, especially their running backs. That's always the, the, uh, the fine line of the physical, physical block at the point of attack and, and guys trying to shed blocks to get off and make a tackle. So all the way now to the 31-yard line. And again, we'll see if the Thunder have any response to North Central's rushing attack as they piled 307 yards rushing. High snap, and once again, they'll hand it off to Sean Allen. Looking for some space, but it's going to be tackled from behind. And you can see the Wheaton crowd finally fired up as it's Caleb McClung, one of many to get there on the play. Yeah, I think that's what you see. Wheaton said, we're not going to let them run. There's a run blitzes, just disrupting those pulling guards. Yep. Really physical. Flying to the ball. Love to see that. Loss of four on first down. As they now get shake up parity in the ball game. So this is one of those... You, you're probably going to see some sort of play action rollout for, for Lanin. Yep, give him the opportunity to run it, pass it. Lanin only three pass attempts in the first half. Also had that long touchdown run in the first half. And now here is Lanin looking to throw feel some pressure. Flushed out to his left. Lanin, he's going to take off and try to find some running room, but he's going to be tackled. Come on, the ball we got out. the ball. Wheaton says they have it. What a physical hit from the corner. Was that the corner out there on the edge? Linebacker pursuing. Johnny Eller was the one who has the football. And the Thunder do have it. So if you wanted to start a script for the second half, this is exactly what the Thunder wanted. And that's what you have to do as a defense. When you're getting outmatched, you got to make... Oh, that was Virgil Cannon. Yeah. Virgil Cannon coming up and making the hit. That's only the second turnover for North Central. So disaster for the Cardinals after allowing the touchdown. Lane and fumbling it. Lands up in the hands of Johnny Eller. Now the Thunder have it at the Cardinals' 30th chance to strike once again. They're loading the box now. Yep, and here's Dorsen off the play fake. When I set Great up the screen, play it's going to be Giovanni Weeks looking for some space. Weeks inside the 30 weeks, and he's, he's still up, still on his feet. Yeah. And he's going to be brought down at about the 21 22 yard line. But you can see the Wheaton crowd finally fired up. That's right. You know what's interesting about the body language right now coming out of halftime? The offensive line for Wheaton fired up, very physical. A lot of hands on the hips for North Central's defense, although they. I mean, really, I mean, maybe you would say the time of possession thing that we talked about earlier, they just came out of halftime. A lot of hands on hips right now. Eight of eight on first down. Weeks now 18 carries, 97 yards rushing. Again, Ari broke Olatechu's record, and they'll give it to Giovanni Weeks right up the middle. And, oh, if he stood on his feet, he would have oh, walked in. We got a penalty, though, behind the play. Out on the edge. Is it legal formation? That's from the line judge. And the flag right now on the far side at the 21-yard line. Tough penalty. Situational football, second and short, great run, physical run right up the middle. Now, <clears throat> second down. So it goes against Ben Juska, the junior tight end out of Westmont, Illinois. He's guilty of the call, so back up the thunder. Tough, I didn't see, didn't see where the penalty came from. It's, it, I didn't see it either. I mean, he was lined up, I believe. On you know, the line? On the line on the far side of the field. Ball went right we up go. the middle. So now it's second down and 12 from the 32. That's they must a tough have, call. They must have had the number wrong. You see once again on the replay. That is not a block on the back. He's a guy on the line of scrimmage. Now He's right there, maybe. But he was engaged. Yeah. Whatever. Second down and 12 from the 22. Giovanni Weeks in motion. Here is Thorson looking to throw pass. It's going to be incomplete. It went in and out of the hands of Seth Kortenhoven. Yeah. Or, actually, excuse me, it was Randy Voyacek. Apologies for that. 
Zwojcik only one catch so far this season. So after the penalty, the incompletion, and it's now third and ten. It tangled up coming out of his break. It's tough. He's kind of stumbling coming out of the break. Hard to catch a pass that's coming in hot as it should on the curl route. And if you're Coach Scott, do you think about perhaps going for a fourth down, trying to get as much as you can, and then perhaps have a fourth and short? Yes, absolutely at this point in the game. Third down and ten from the 30-yard line. Man to man. Under 2 of 8 on third down conversion so far. Here is Thorson lobbing it for the end zone. The pass is going to be incomplete. Stride for stride. It was intended for Caleb Titherington and now brings up an interesting fourth down. Just it's been a it's been a tough day for, for, for Thorson on the deep ball. He's been a little bit strong on all of these throws. We haven't Yeah, I would say in his defense though, several of these deep balls, the receivers do not look like they think the ball's coming to mm -hmm. them. You know, I mean I I don't know if I mean the body language from quarterback after the play would say that they weren't on the same page. Yeah. Thunder going for it on fourth <laughs> down, by the way, Thorson twelve of twenty three for one hundred and twenty eight yards. Under two or three on fourth down conversion so far in this ball game, they need it here to keep the chains moving. They got single so coverage to the top, to the short yep. side. Cardinals would love to get a stop here and end the momentum here. Is Thorson lobbing it upstairs? Ben oh, Bonga what a grab! Oh, how does he call? He got oh, it. They called it. Ben yeah. no, but a head, Bonga, not a touchdown. Incredible acrobatic oh. catch. Now a flag. Meanwhile, at the end, it's at the far side of the 16-yard line. We'll see who's that's against. But meanwhile, what a catch by Bonga. Way to high point the football. That's what you love to see from your receiver. Yeah. Winning a 50-50 ball. We have to sort out the penalty. How is that not a touchdown? And right on cue. They clearly call it a catch. There's no doubt about that. Now the penalty is the question. As the referees are discussing. So the ruling on the field is an incomplete pass. First down, North Central. So they ruled incomplete. Wow. What a huge turn of tides. What's the penalty? Is there no flag? Great protection by the offensive line here. Great throw. You, you gave your wide receiver a chance. The DB has no idea where that ball is. Great play, though. Way to get your hand in there. That's exactly how you're... We also have a sideline warning oh, against there it is. North Central. Yeah. That is their first. Oh, that was the flag. The yeah. penalty is against North Central for a sideline interference. A rule incomplete. It's a great play by the DB. When you're beat, you're, you're coached to get hip to hip and reach your hand. And as he goes up to, as the receiver goes up to high point, you're trying to stick your hand right where his hands are. It's a great play. Wow, yeah. North Central's defense, again, tough as usual, they hand it off now inside, and oh, what a nice carry all the way up to the 40-yard line for Sean Allen. Yeah, well, that's where we talk about it. You can't penalties putting you behind yeah. the chains on the schedule. Wheaton had a first down, great drive, and yep. just, I mean, you can't have it. Yeah, clock in the back, really put him, set him back. Coach Deerking, just an excellent defense from last year, best scoring defense, only allowing about six points a game. They held 11 out of their 15 opponents to single-digit scores, including a stretch where they just shut out four consecutive opponents. Now second down and one after that gain of nine. Here's Lanin. He still shot. has the ball. He wants to take a deep shot down for you for D'Angelo Hardy. He's got it. What, what a, a grab by Hardy inside the 20. What a throw. And, and what a hook up there. The first grab for Hardy in this ball game that no catches in the first half comes up with a huge play to move the chains. That is as far as he can throw a football. Yeah. Wheaton safety's in position there. That's Clay Campbell. You could see he read it the whole way. He was on top of it, but that's really where a perfect throw on the yep. outside. D'Angelo Hardy kept great potty position to separate himself from the defender and went in and dropped it right in the bucket. Yep. Now you just now you have to bow up. I mean, a lot of times that's a home run shot that they think we're going to score a touchdown with this yep. play. You're at least making them run a couple more plays here. 48-yard gain. Here's Lane and still has the ball. Lane and rolling to his left and a bison tie fires for the end zone oh, pass. Man. It's be incomplete though. It was Riley Schwartz who broke it up and it now brings up second down and ten. It's well very, defended. Well defended. Very encouraged to see the Wheaton defense not lose contain. Had a man for the quarterback, had a man for the receiver in the flat, and then made him throw a very challenging pass yeah, back that's across his body. <laughs> I mean, I guess they almost completed that, but that, if you're the offensive coordinator, you're up 35-14, you're rolling, you're almost to the sideline, you throw it back across your body. That's a tough throw. If he's going to his right, yeah. I think you like that. That's a la Josh Allen for the Buffalo Bills. <laughs> uh, Dagger Mahomes. Mahomes. Those throws on the move 
to his left. And that way that tender receiver is Joey Lombardi. Uh -oh. He's going to be a keeper with Lennon. And here is Lennon looking for some space. He's got the touchdown. Oh. So Luke Lanen's second rushing touchdown here in this ball game, saying, "I'm going to take it myself yeah. and score." Yeah, you can see it up from all the way up here. It's just too much speed. Yeah, it's a mismatch. You got to, you're outmatched in that. You have a defensive end trying to chase one of the fastest players on the North Central, yep. North Central offense. Great, great play call hey. in that situation. Tough to tough to come away from this anything but super impressed with quarterback Luke Lanen. Absolutely. So in the previous Wheaton possession, it was a. Everyone thought it was a catch, including me, but nope, they say incomplete. And then the Cardinals, that uh, championship pedigree, wow. strikes right back and responds. 42 to 14, the Cardinals leading by 28. Yeah, nice job by North Central to respond. You know, Wheaton really felt like they could take back control of the momentum of this game. Maybe you get a 35 21. And That's the mark of convert. a champion. Yep. They came out a little bit. Taking back, Wheaton made a great drive, come down scores, get a turnover. Like I said, body language literally on that play was hands on hips. Yeah. We gash him for a first down, gets called back for a penalty. And then as a true champion, they got they took a punch, but they respond back, and that's why they've put themselves at the top of the Division Three heap as far as football. One thing it's been encouraging to watch the special teams units, at least in the kicking game. Our kick return and kick coverage has been solid today. Let's see what we, maybe we can spring a we got two quick Great returners back here. Let's see if we can spring something here. Yeah, just like we did on the last drive, starting the ball on your 35, you know, just puts the math in your favor. Mm -hmm. And uh, flipping the script with field position is how you can find the hidden yardage in games like this. It'll be Shane Reineck sending it right back to the Thunder. Jack Allen, Seth Porter went back deep to receive. Thunder got a touchdown on their opening, on their opening drive. There we go. And it'll be Seth Portnovan from inside his own 10. Portnovan. Weaving through traffic okay. and is going to be brought Come down at about the 23-yard line. That's where the Thunder's second drive will start. So in both in, in both the first half and the second half, the Thunder were able to score on their opening drive, but they pretty much stalled out the rest of the way. Yeah, yeah. I think they were very similar to the first half. The reason the drive stalled was not because of anything North Central did. It was self-inflicted. If you put yourself in long yardage situations, North Central's got the speed and the size with their front four to put pressure on you, and then they've got plenty of guys in coverage to make a play. You mm -hmm. need to stay on schedule, and that's going to be the key for this drive right here. Leading with five penalties in the first half. As you said, those were drive killers. Here's Thorson rolling to his right. Low throw, but it's going to be incomplete. He's going to want that one back. It's a great play call. Seth Kornhoven, who was the intended receiver on that play, now brings up second and ten. I think we just had, you had double out routes and that slot receiver, I think Titherington there, just sat down right in the zone, found the soft spot, and I think that one just got away from Thorson as he was rolling to his right. No Couldn't believe how open he was. Yeah, <laughs> he wanted that one back, you could tell after that throw. So now second down and 10. With 9.20 left to go in the third quarter. Once again, that rushing attack of North Central has been potent. A rush four here. Thorson given time out of the backfield. Giovanni Weeks pass incomplete as it was behind the intended receiver. Now yeah. a late flag at the end as Weeks is down. That's tough. I mean, I would say. Oh man, that is a that's a terrible play. So you I hate play. to see that, but that's a terrible play. Get me in the call. No, that he hit him. Yeah, he did hit him. Yeah, he hit him late. And I see the athletic training staff attending to Weeks. Good thing he's walking on his own power, one of the best running backs in the country. So that's two that's two throws in a row. You, you, I mean, obviously the misfire to the dirt to Titherington. That one on that route, you, you, you want to help your receiver out. Put that on the chest in front of him. I thought those those throws are coming out a little hot. I think yeah. Thorson's definitely They're got the ball. adrenaline pumping. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number seven in North, the defense. 15-yard penalty that results in a first down. So they will flag and... They will flag Angelo Cusimano for that hit on Giovanni Week, so that will move the chain. So only the fifth penalty for the Cardinals so far in this ball game. We just got that backwards there. Play with CGO back out around the field in the next play. Train noise in the background. First down and ten from the 43 after the penalty. And a delay snap, it'll hand it off. It's Henry Brown looking for some space to the outside. Brown weaving his way. A drag, a 
whole host of Cardinals there to meet him, though. He'll be brought down at about the 48-yard line. I thought the trains were only supposed to come when we were on defense. <laughs> <laughs> Strong physical run, though. I mean, it's a lot to like here about Brown in the running game. You, you see him really keeps his feet driving there, breaks several tackles, and, and gets his shoulder pads back downhill. A great play there, positive yardage. Puts us in a really, uh, really good second, second and manageable, second and five. A lot of plays for second and five here out of the, the Wheaton playbook. So it is from the 48-yard line. Yes, you have Jack Allen motioning into the slot. And here's Thorson on the run pass option. He has Titherington right at the sticks, maybe a yard shy. Should bring up third down for the Thunder offense. Kusumano's fired up there. This is where, again, I, I know I've said this in the first half, but this is where Jesse, it's like, hey, Jesse, you got third and very short. Maybe we can just go a little bit quicker. Not allow some subs in here, but he's got a package that he wants to go to. It's third and short. Again, we're we're going to go for it. We're not punting here, so I guess he got two plays, two looks at it. Yeah, given how the Thunder are down 20 points, essentially running, trying to run their four-minute offense, but taking a lot of time definitely is four-down territory. Third and a short one. They give it to Henry. Nope, it's Thorson keeping it himself, and Thorson right at the sticks. Where will they mark him? Got it. And they will give him the first down. So the Thunder well, keeping the drive moving. You see that replay? I don't know anybody had a gap on that. Brown, I mean, I think he was at five yards before the safety thought he had the ball. I don't think, yeah. I mean, Kordhoven did a great job picking up the, the, the linebacker mm -hmm. defensive end coming off this weak side. I mean, took it in the chest, but that's the reason there was any play to happen there. So Henry Brown comes out of the game. Jack Allen, who used to be a running back for the Thunder, now switches to receiver and kickoff duties. He's in the backfield from the 47-yard line. Here's Thorson. Feels the pressure. He's going to set up a screen with Titherington. Caleb Titherington trying to follow his blocker. He's got a first oh, down a lot more. Flag the at the oh. end, but this might be coming back against Wheaton. Back. I think we got Jessica again. again. And if it is against Jessica, that would not be the first time that be his third penalty. the block in the back. Yeah. I mean, he's a physical player. You love that. I think in both these situations, he's engaged with the guy. In the back, number 18 in the offense. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Pushed out. He's engaged with the defender and just continues to block through the play. That's tough. So back them up all the way at the 47-yard line. That's what we talked about. And Wheaton's going to have to overcome a penalty. Obviously, they're going to have a couple downs to do it. It's first and long, but... You know, here, here's a chance for them to respond in the situation. Officially first and 16. And now here is Thorson rolling to his left, trying to buy some time. Thorson in, and he's going to go out of bounds. You saw <coughs> Myron Lewis giving chase, and Thorson just had nowhere to go with that ball. It's and tough, and that you, you just got to throw that one away. You got to eat it. Yep. Once the play's not there, Norson tried to sift out. You, you throw it away because you don't want to take the loss of yardage. We, that's a set. I mean, they take three sack. Yards, a sack, yeah. and now it's second and 20, and, or almost second and 20 instead of second and 16. By the way, good sight for Wheaton fans. Giovanni Weeks is back in the game. There we go. So still, after last play was a loss of two. Now from their own 45, second and 18, Weeks in motion. Here is Thorson. Has time to throw. Thorson pocket collapses, and he goes down. All the way back at the 44-yard line, it's James Hart, one of those defensive tackles, making the play. I understand the call there. You're, you're trying to hit something quick, get it out. Maybe you, you fall forward, you get it to third and ten, and then you get some for fourth down. But uh, great job by the by the North Central defense, sticking their zones. They were tight to everybody. There really wasn't much for Ben to do there. Yeah, you get the defensive line is going to get the stat sheet on that one yep. as a sack, but that was definitely the secondary because they had everyone covered up and doing their job. North Central entering this game with nine sacks, third down, and a very long 20. And if you're Coach Scott, are you thinking about just maybe getting half of this and going for it on fourth down? Yeah, it's tough. I, I so they will look to throw once again. Here is Thorson lobbing it pass. It's going to be caught. And it's Ben Bonga right at the sticks. Be just short. I think they're going to spot him about a yard, yard and a half short. It's really interesting coverage. You saw three defenders from North Central sitting at the sticks. So they can break up on anything thrown in front of them. But a little late by that safety or that corner coming down the hill on, on Bonga. So nice pitch and catch there for the Thunder. They Makes will, fourth and short. And they'll officially mark it fourth and two. Bonga, by the there way, we go. fifth We're catch. going fast, but we can't do this sub. Okay, here we're in it. And there's fourth catch going out of their jumbo formation. Look at this. 
Randy Wojcik in the game. They go heavy. They'll toss it to the outside. It's Giovanni Weeks. He's got the first down still on his feet. And he's going to be brought down at the 30-yard line. So once again, the Thunder rolling the dice down 28. And they're able to get the first down. A lot of eye candy right there. Riley, Riley Howard, I mean, came in the game and lit up the edge defender for North Central. I mean, I think, I think he was the one who hit the, the great Oof. block on the offensive on the uh, first opening kickoff. Hopefully yeah. the young man's okay out there. And there's an injured player right Number now. Number 26, yeah. He, he gets bent up on right here at the end. Oh. Looks real painful. And it's Antoine Walker, their all-American corner. At least he's able to walk in his own oh, that's power. That's a good sight. Good sign. see him yeah. up. Yeah. He's a talented player. Had a great career. You, you, you don't want to see any kid getting hurt out here. Yeah, you hope so. it's just something where you get rolled up on and you needed a second just to catch your breath. But yep. nice to see him walking off on his own power. Yeah, love, love, love Riley Howard setting the tone early, coming out making a physical play on the kick, the first kickoff return. Duker! Fun to see him out there on the edge making a play. Great block. So, Antoine Walker going to the sideline. Let's go, Duker! In the, the country. He could walk on his own power. That's good to see. Great story there for Wheaton, overcoming that those seven negative plays, put themselves in scoring position here now on the edge of the, the, the red zone. From the 30-yard line, here is Thorson. He wants to lob it for the end zone. The pass is going to be caught. What a grab. But they say incomplete. It was intended for it. Bonga. Once again, thought he had the grab, but cannot come up with it. Love the DB getting excited there. Yeah, uh, that's like, <laughs> But it's more like the wide receiver just didn't catch it. Yeah. Oh my goodness, that would have been Is a that circus grab. I think that was 31. Yeah, I think they went right after yeah, the uh, big yeah. work. Yeah. Yeah, just came, came into the game. The game. Because Antoine Walker, I mean, Bunga once again did a great job creating some separation. Another one where he had it in his hands and the DB did a great job wrestling mm -hmm. it away when it went to the ground. Bunga to the bottom of your screen, second down and 10 for the Thunder. Here's Thorson. Run it, Given buddy. time, hit as he releases the pass. In stride, it's touchdown. Titherington. Wow. Caleb Titherington, he's in for the touchdown. Got to love Great. the offensive line there. Yeah. Great protection. Thorson stepping up in the pocket. Nice ball. And Thorson knew he was going to get drilled, but still able to deliver to Caleb Titherington for his first career touchdown. I think you got to be real. If you're Wheaton here and you say you come out in the second half, tear up the stat sheet, and you come out and you say, we're just going to play a half of football and we want to show something, I yeah. think, as you said, Tim, I, I think you have to be impressed by both the defensive effort and the offense's response to overcome a couple negative plays. And then stepping up, Titherington, that was a great catch, great throw from Thorson in traffic. So now the extra point That's is good. up, and it is good. So the Thunder two third-quarter touchdown showing a little bit of life, but that defense is going to have to step up if they're going to have a chance. Yeah. And I think this is what you get in a rivalry game. Right? I don't think Wheaton came into this game wide-eyed or overwhelmed. I think when you play each other year in and year out, the resume, the pedigree, all those things, it's, it's a rivalry game, and there's a lot of pride in these kids. They've played together against each other in JV games. They've played against each other. Many of them are fifth or sixth year seniors because of COVID, and clearly there is no quit. There is only fight, and that's what you love to see in a, in a, in a, in a meaningful rivalry game where there's a trophy on the line that there is no quit in this Wheaton team. It'd be fun to watch what the defense does here against what has been a very potent offensive effort from North Central. That's right. Taps off a 12-play drive into the end zone. Titherington, again, first career touchdown. Probably ball that he'll keep once he does hang up his cleats. Once again, the Wheaton crowd, which was pretty much silent as North Central's rushing attack just took control of this game, now having a little bit more life. Chris, you remember your first touchdown? Uh, There's I, too many of them uh, to count, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, too many years ago to remember. <laughs> How many touchdowns did you, by the, did you have, by the way? Oh, what a play! Oh, he... Meanwhile... Surprise onside they kick. They tried an onside Surprise kick with, Mate with Mateo Jesh. Mateo had it in his hands at 10 yards. It definitely hit the ground afterwards. There's a scrum. Lots of hands pointing each way right now. So Coach Scott. Oh, to God. Back and, it, and they'll the give script. it to Wheaton. Oh, my goodness. The Thunder fans are going absolutely nuts. They try an onside Wait, kick. Wait, what? And now they'll give it to North Central. Wait. Wheaton thought they had oh, it. Wow. What in the world? And now they rule it back to North Central who has the ball. What? 
I mean, <laughs> absolute confusion. I think the fans are confused. Obviously, the Wheaton fans are confused. North Central fans are probably even more confused because now their team has the ball, and that means Wheaton's defense has to go out on the field, and the fans are not really upset. They're letting the refs hear it. I think the refs got caught off guard by that one. <laughs> oh, Mateo had it in his hands there at 10 yards. You know, when you get in a scrum, you never know what happens at the bottom of a pile. But I love the play call. I love yeah. that from Coach Scott good. there. Yeah. But it does backfire, and it gives the Cardinals possession at the Thunder 47-yard line. So very short field for the offense to work with. And here's a huge carry all the way down nice. to the 35-yard line for Sean Allen. That's this is this is the evolution of offense in today's college mm -hmm. for in football world. Eight, 88, 89 is coming in motion. He is coming in motion downhill towards the line of scrimmage before the ball is snapped yeah. on that play. I, I'm an offensive guy, but as a defensive guy, you got to sit here and say, "Come on now, like you, you can't be moving towards the line of scrimmage." Chris, don't get me started. <laughs> There's a whole lot of those in college football where <laughs> offensive linemen on zone reads going way down on the RPO yeah. game. Yeah, they're you know, downfield. Yeah. Sean Allen stays in the back of that run, picks up a first down. Clock now dips under 4.15 here in the third quarter. Thunder showing a little bit of light, but the Cardinals trying to shut them down. Here's Sean Allen once oh again, God. and he's going to be brought down right near the 30-yard line. Well, there's always the idea that was just egregious one on that last one. I had to, had to comment. So officially a gain of three yards. We're going to bring up second down and seven from the 31-yard line. Good job with the Wheaton defense rallying a lot of hats to the point of attack there and then being sure-handed in the tackle. I mean, North Central's done a great job of making the first guy miss or bouncing off the first tackle, but Wheaton getting a lot of guys there, making getting the running back on the ground. Second down and seven from the 31-yard line. In motion, Allen. Now to the left of Lanin, and they'll give it to Allen looking for some space. Wheaton defense stepping up as Allen maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. And bring up third down. Yeah, you look you look at here now, it's third down, third and six for, for North Central. Really haven't had many of these this the entire game. I'm I'm thinking they're probably gonna stay with that physical inside running game. They've yeah. been successful right up the middle with you know Chris that tight end in motion or really just a power with the fullback. I think on that last play though, if they're looking at laying in and keeping the ball, yeah. once again laying in against an outside linebacker or a defensive end. Yeah, I space. think they saved that for four. I, there's, uh, I would imagine they're going for it here regardless. Yeah, so two down territory. Cardinals one of two on third down. They have not had to make many many third downs as you said. And now here's oh, Lane looking call. to throw Drop a pass it. to a uh, wide open Terrence Washington oh, down the sideline. It's actually Bobby Beamer who came up with the grab. I mean. <laughs> Hardy on the chains. So Beamer only had one catch entering this game, comes up with a huge third down conversion for the Cardinals. Yeah, nice play call. I think D'Angelo Hardy got lucky there. Yeah. It was unnecessary behind the play. It had no effect on the play, and that would have been a tragedy to have that one called back. That was a great play call. Great play fake. fake. Yeah. He really hid the ball from the defense, and uh, no one in the flat to take the tight end there. So now first down and goal from the seven. I think if you're North Central here, maybe you give – Give D'Angelo Hardy one shot here. See yeah. if he gets a – he's one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, Hardy, the whole field to himself. Hardy only one catch for 48 yards on that deep bomb. Here's Lanin going to keep it himself on the read. Option Lanin yeah, spins flag oh, on the play as he's brought down inside the five. Yeah. We'll Holding on number 70 there. Should be. Offense number 70. Ten-yard penalty for the previous spot. First down. He'll go against Jackie Maples, the first-team all CCIW left tackle. Also, the All-American, who's guilty of the call. Yeah, physical tackle there, though, from Wheaton on lane in. I mean, I know he's a dual-threat quarterback. I just you want to go out and win a national title. That guy's going to be driving the driving the ship. I don't know if I want my quarterback mm -hmm. taking a helmet in the chin on the five-yard line. Now there are two minutes to go here in the third quarter. Cardinals knocking on the door once again to respond to Wheaton's touchdown. Well, this is North Central's chance to respond, right? I mean, Wheaton has a couple situations where they put themselves behind the chains with penalties. So we'll see how North Central responds to that as, uh, as the holding call here. Chisholm stays in the game. They need 17 yards for the end zone. It is first down and goal. Lane it. And sorry, a stoppage of play. Timeout. Timeout, North Central. Their first charge timeout of the half. So Coach Spencer opting to talk things out with this team and just to put into perspective how great the Cardinals have been they're entering this game on an 18 game winning streak they've won 29 consecutive regular season wins they've won 26 consecutive CCIW games just a dominant team of course those two national champions one in 2019 
and then the other coming in 2022 as they lost in 2021 to Mary Harlan Baylor. Their last regular season loss is here in this game to Wheaton, is it not? It would be, yes, yep. in 2019. 2019. Yeah. That was a great game. I threw up a little bit in my mouth right there. <laughs> Stay tuned. Just listening to all of those stats on uh. how good North Central is. That's a, that's a lot of them. That was yep. a lot, lot, of, lot of wins right there. Yep. Timothy Financial Council, by the way, is proud to support Wheaton College Athletics. Their offices in Wheaton and Chicago have financial planners who are very invested in the Wheaton community and want to help clients plan for the future. Interested in learning more about how hourly financial planning can help you? Check out their website at timothyfinancial.com. Yeah, I didn't think the play clock was expiring there, so I... I think it's a look. I think they yeah, probably they, had some play call they didn't like, like the. Yeah, well, we definitely had a free rusher, so I don't know if there was some confusion. He had the the protection fan to the right, and we had the extra guy coming on the left. But we had someone coming free, but thankfully. So a minute four, 38 until the end of the third quarter. Here's Lane in, still has the ball. Lane in, going to step up his pocket. He has some room. There goes Luke Lane in. Inside the 10, Lane in still on his feet, and he's going to be pushed out of bounds on the far side at likely the five yard line. Is it Virgil Cannon giving chase on that play? I love the competitor in him. If I'm the offensive coordinator and I have my amazing quarterback sprinting and then putting his right hand, throwing hand in the face yeah. of a running running back or linebacker. I just think situationally you want to protect yourself. I know I love the stiff arm, but yeah. that's your throwing arm, your throwing hand. It takes one one wrong go, and then you're done. Mm. Second down and goal from the five. Clock now dips under 110 in the third quarter. D'Angelo Hardy in motion. They hand it off inside. It is Chisholm, and he's in for the touchdown. Great second effort there. Great. Yeah, that was contact almost at the line of scrimmage. Yeah. He just kept his feet moving, falling forward. Second rushing touchdown for Jordan Chisholm, who, yep. by the way, had two touchdowns entering this game and now doubles up with four rushing touchdowns on the season. That's just a great example of a well-coached football player, football team. I mean, yeah. that's hidden yardage in every game. Yeah. If you can fall forward, I mean, most guys, it's two or three yards just from falling forward on every play. And in this case, Locked yes, we it. got it. The Finally kick got one. is blocked. Thunder opting not to play it as it goes into the end zone, so the extra point for Sean Reineck is no good. And it's interesting to as you watch this North Central game, and they've been as they've this team as they've been so physical over the last few years, so much different than when Brock Rudder was the quarterback, and he kind of just could sit back there and he was mobile, but he wasn't really going to beat you with his feet. He mm -hmm. beat you with his brains and his arm. Yep. Lanon's a great quarterback, smart guy, but he is really. He's that X factor right now. He's been able to steal yardage with his feet. He's been able to keep plays alive. He's really t I mean, It's a huge difference maker in Division Three football. Yeah, I mean, I think at any level, if you can flip the script to make the math in your favor where that quarterback position is a threat to run the football, it just makes all the numbers back in your favor as an yeah. offense. If the defense can account for everyone minus the quarterback, there's just less you can do. And uh, that's why they're, you know, in the position they are and the, the run they've had here as he's taken the helm after their uh, first national title three years ago. Extra point, no good. Makes it a 27-point game. That, by the way, caps off a seven-point drive. Only 47 yards thanks to the great field position after the Thunder tried an onside kick. Here comes the return, meanwhile, all the way out to the 25-yard line. That's where the Thunder will start their next drive. They've shown... They've shown that they can move the ball. Yep. Obviously, some pre-snap penalties, some you know, mistakes being made, but that's all you want to see from this Wheaton offense, just some progress maybe to take in the next game. Yeah. And well, i got to give we give props to that uh, extra point block team. They've yeah. been so close. <laughs> there were several guys up the middle. I believe we blocked it coming up the middle. Someone got a hand up, couldn't catch the number. But I just love that fight, that in a situation where North Central scores to put 48 points on the board, that they are still coming. And that's where you, it's win the next play. That's a frustrating job, I can tell you that much. Because you're, you're laying out on ev every everyone. Time. And they've been so close. Yeah. I love it that they got one. So 53 seconds until the end of the third quarter. Here is Thorson. Oh, they got him. Looking to throw a watch out from oh. behind Thorson. And the pass is going to be incomplete. I believe got hit as he released it. Yep. As you had Juwan Williams, who almost came up with the interception. I think he was... He had the deep shot early. Early, yeah. There was a double move to Cordova, and I think he ran a post-corner. And Martin Ebo was the one who was delivering pressure from Thorson. He did not see it, so it's now second down and 10. 
Yeah, that was Will Kettlecamp that came through and got a good hit on Thorson there. So as a defensive player, jumps off the stat sheet. He's a leader on this defense. Good play by him. Thorson, 16 of 31 now, 184 yards, two touchdowns, but the Cardinals have blanketed this passing attack. And it'll be a run, Weeks, Matt right at the line of scrimmage. As you saw Martin Ebo fired up after that last play. Yeah, James Hart just shucking his blocker, meeting running back in the, in the hole, but great play, great effort, individual effort there. So yeah, James Hart. So it's now third down and nine. Barely any difference between play clock and game clock. And the Thunder, three of 11 on third down conversions. They're going to have to run a play here. Yeah, Jack Allen to the bottom of your screen in that trips formation. Here is Thorson here. He bring pressure. Thorson, he goes down all the way back at the 22-yard line. It's Will Kettlecamp who comes in with a huge sack. And Danny Nuccio as well getting in there. I mean, they brought pressure. We picked it up on the blitz. Running back went low, but the extra step up in the pocket. Uh, the secondary, give him credit. They were... They were covering the guys downfield, and Thorson really had nowhere to go with the football. Yeah. And now bring us to the end of the third quarter. Thunder likely going to punt to start the fourth quarter, but the Cardinals, their defense, they've given up touchdowns, but their offense in smooth control, they have pretty much responded to every possession Wheaton has had. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I think that's where, I mean, <clears throat> when you look at them, uh, what North Central can do with the football, obviously they, did, they took that one deep shot to D'Angelo Hardy, but forgive me give credit where credit is due but right there's only three things that can happen when you throw the football yeah, right. and two of them are bad uh, I think North Central has embodied that mentality I think what you look at the, the, what they've done they did they North Central has done much of what uh, Alabama did in their early run to success where they physically overwhelm you at the line of scrimmage pound you with the rock and then in play action you've got a quarterback who can roll out hit a receiver coming on a crossing pass and that's a recipe for success at any level of football whether it's in our flag football games right. as coaches today or uh, at the high school, college, or at the professional level. Just a, a quick rundown here. Joe Sacco still only six carries for 138. I'm, I'm not sure if there was an injury there or something, but six carries for 138. Luke Lennon, uh, eight for 129. Uh, but all, in total, North Central's got 38 plays for 512 yards. You really just don't see that often uh, against a Wheaton defense, but really impressive display so the first play of the fourth quarter will be a punt. And back deep to receive. And going to get it right at the 40-yard line. And now bring the Cardinals back out on the field. By the way, you were talking about the running game of Alabama. They've also produced some really good running backs. I'm thinking of Mark Ingram. You're thinking of Derrick Henry, Josh mm -hmm. Jacobs, even Bo Scarborough, who yeah. was not necessarily a great NFL running back, but he was really dominant in college football. Well, and that's really, I mean, it's the blueprint, right? It's like win at the line of scrimmage obviously college football has evolved since that era of alabama and they've had to to really dial up more consistency or not more uh, more excitement on offense but you just if you can win the game at the line of scrimmage offensively if you can move the ball and defensively you can create pressure with four that puts all the numbers in your favor and that's what they have a program that said hey we're going to build our our program from the line out and then complement with some very talented skill position players and also forget about not forgot about Najee harris meanwhile here's a nice run to Forced Coleman was able to bounce it to the outside. Oh, they called it. Yeah, number 70 there. Yeah, Another the one. one. Yeah, I mean, he. that's the tough. That's tough because he had the block line, uh, lined up, but the running back bounces it. Defensive end turns to pursue. He's and, looking around. He knows it. Yeah, he knew. Uh, it's tough. That puts you in a tough position. First down. Yeah, that play's meant to go up the middle, and running back bounces it, makes a great effort, but... Props to the defensive end for Wheaton for, for making it happen there. So the penalty goes against, once again, the left tackle, Jeske Maples. That's Isaac Parrish. So now bring up first down and 20 from the 31. They'll backed up a little bit. So far, if you're a Cardinals fan, have to be pleased with the running game so far. Of course, Sacco, six carries, 138 yards. We have not seen him since the first quarter, but Luke Lane in 129 yards on eight carries. Chisholm, six carries, two rushing touchdowns. This running, this rushing attack, again, has just been so dominant, regardless of who the runner is. Oh, Here's boy. Look at that. Lane going to wow. keep it himself. And there goes Luke Lane off to the races and slides all the way across the 40. As Lane just showing off the wheels in this ball game. It's a quick decision, too, right? He sees the pressure coming, knows he doesn't have time to, to make a throw, and then he just goes. Yeah. I think they're. I think he might have been 
It might have been draw. a keeper the whole way. Yeah, quarterback draw. Yeah, I think you're right. We have a guy in the pocket there, or sorry, in the hole to make that tackle, but it's just tough. You got a defensive lineman against a very talented player. I mean, he has that simple jump cut, and then he's one step, and he is gone. Really leaning 25 rushing touchdowns in his career, has two more here, so now 27 total. And once again, Leenan still has the ball, looking to throw away, and watch out as he goes down go. all the way back at the 43-yard line. Great effort there. That's right. Two, Jack Eller or Jackson. Actually, Eller. Caleb McClung there who made okay. the sack. Great effort. Great effort. And that's one of the things that you really love. I've really enjoyed as a fan, as an alum, watching uh, CJ Nightingale defenses. I, he is really an aggressive play caller. He doesn't love to sit back in coverage and kind of make the defense beat you. He likes to heat you up and try to make big plays and he's been sticking with it has not worked on every play but i appreciate him sticking with his guns on this that's yeah. the that's the key to under entering this game with plays. five sacks they have two here in this ball game third down and eight from the 43 they must get to the 49 yard line of wheaton and then once again it is luke lane looking for some space and lane does he have the first down that's is the question interesting spot i mean they have it right i mean it looks like it's yeah ooh, it's right there, there at go. the line of scrimmage i mean yeah, the umpire has a better spot there than where the line judge had it on in like the 47. And They're not well, even going to measure. They will just call it a first down. Wow. Well, well, here we go. Here's We'll see it here. I, I thought he was down short. This is a real awkward play. Oh, no, that's a good spot. He had it. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So moves the chains for the Cardinals. And if you're North Central, all you care about is just wasting the clock, milking the clock, and just getting out of this game with a W. Yeah. Trips at the bottom of your screen. First down and 10 from the 49. Well, Lane and looking to throw. Fires near side in the pass. It's going to be caught wide open is Joey Lombardi. First time those two have hooked up. And Lombardi entering this game, leading the team in receiving yards with 213. Yeah, so when you when you bring pressure but you don't want to play man, so you're kind of doing that zone blitz, there's some portion of your zone that's going to be left open, and they leave that strong side flat open. and. It's the first time they've really attacked that weakness. Yeah. D'Angelo Hardy also ran like yep. a post dig. About draws three a, guys on him. Draws a lot of attention. Peter Lombardi's name called. I mean, he statistically shows as the deep ball threat as the first three games of the season. Hardy gets a lot of catches and is a great player, but uh, I'm sure he's excited to get his hands on the ball here yeah. in the fourth quarter. Lombardi, second-year player out of North Central, actually started off at Illinois State University before transferring here to North Central, and they'll hand it off. It's going to be Sean Allen. And he's going to be brought down at around the 30, 31 yard line. Again, just keeping the clock moving. The Cardinals just wasting as much clock as possible. They know they have this game in the bag, up 27. It would take a miracle for Wheaton to come from behind. And I bet if your coach Spencer, you're just talking just ball security, no turnovers, no stupid plays. Just run the football and keep wasting that clock. Well, and, and if you're in North Central, you, this is. Probably the last game. Well, they, they still play Wash U, but they're not going to have many games where these starters get to play the whole game. I think that's the reason they're still in the game. Yeah. Otherwise, you would have them out. I assume you want someone to get hurt in a game like this now. And once again, it's the carry to Sean Allen. Allen has space. He's got a first down. Sean Allen all the way down inside the 20. Another great run there by this North Central offense. Good blocking out there on the edge. Mm. I mean, it's 13. Joy Lombardi, I called his name earlier for the catch. but That was a better effort than uh, Hardy on the outside, by the way, receivers. Yeah. Clay Campbell was the one who made the tackle. Allen now subs out Charles Coleman in the game now. And as once again, this running back by committee's approach that the Cardinals are using. Put any running back in there and they can still make plays. And also give credit to this powerful offensive line. And Jackie Maples, Gerard Thornton, two All-Americans Thunder showing pressure and they will bring it. And a handoff does go to to Coleman, and he will score untouched for the touchdown. That's a great blocking up front. I mean, it really you saw is. five Just getting worn down. Five Wheaton defenders, all of them on the ground, offensive line, doing their job, making blocks, and running back untouched. Untouched. It's 415 there. rushing yards for North Central. Four different runners have found the end zone. Of course, you have Lane in who has two rushing touchdowns. Joe Sacco, two rushing touchdowns. Coleman, who just scored, scored his first rushing touchdown. And of course, Jordan Chisholm, two rushing touchdowns. That is seven rushing touchdowns. Well, that's the, oh, missed the extra point there. I mean, that's that's the challenge you face. If you bring everyone up and you yeah. blitz every gap and you lose gap integrity because of a, a great block, I mean, it's all it takes is 
one gap to miss and then it's a touchdown. But as we looked earlier, if we sit back and let them run at you, you're kind of, you got to make the choice and it's a tough call either way. So now 10.44 to go and you would have to think up 33 points. And that should do it. But the Cardinals will likely go to 4-0 in the season, keep that number one ranking. They've just been so dominant in the last couple of seasons. And we talked about it before for the Thunder. This game serves as a benchmark. How well are you going to be playing against the top of toughest competition? And obviously, they've not shown up for this game. But there are some takeaways that you can have from this game. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a couple plays. Now, it doesn't mean you're winning the football game. But there's a couple plays here that, you know, you catch the ball on the, on the bonga deep ball. You recover that onside kick. You, you know, convert the, the convert the fourth in inches. Yeah, there's just there's a couple. It's not like they're you don't feel like the Sweeten team can compete. You th they're better. They are the number ten team in the country. I don't think that there's a lot of teams that want to play Wheaton each week. No, and I think you look at this game, and I don't think anyone on either side of the ball thought, well, we're more talented than what North Central brings to the table. There you go, Cordova. Here is Seth Cordova. Meanwhile, on the return, trying to find some room, and he's going to be brought down. At about the 29-yard line, so we'll see if Coach Scott wants to keep his first strings out there. For sure. Oh, they're going to be out there yeah. the whole time. And, of course, there's this question. When you're being blown out, do you keep the first strings in there? And if you do, why would you want to keep the first strings in the ball game? Yeah, I think uh, here you want to go up against quality competition, uh, especially in a game like this. Yeah, I don't uh, think it, North it, Central's it, taking their starters out. Well, and, I, so and also... In a program like Wheaton, a program like North Central, when you're a freshman, when you're a sophomore, you're not counted on to win football games. You count on your juniors and seniors. So you want to reward those players and let them play the games that they've been training for for an entire year. So Thorson does remain in the game, and the give is to Giovanni Weeks, looking for some space. Weeks, Great play. keeping the legs straight, going to take it right up to the 40-yard line, right at the first down sticks. And what I love about this team is there's no quit. You watch yeah. that, that Wheaton offensive line. I mean, there were blocks all over the field in that play and Gio made contact at five yards and got a first down yeah. I, I think when I look at the way this script plays out for the season I think if you're Wheaton you you knew this was a measuring stick game and you're like hey we didn't play our best we made some mistakes that clearly cost us but you look at the rest of the season is that we need to prove that we're worthy of an opportunity to play uh, into the postseason so you got to take care of business with the rest of the games that you have on your schedule there's titherington off the fourth another great Thornton play. pass and it's going to pick up a first down into north central territory so back-to-back -back positive plays for the thunder titherington's been a real bright spot today and what i love ben bonga there not i mean he's got a couple shots downfield but the individual effort to block on the edge allowed that to be a five-yard pass into the flat to get titherington in space and that's the reason it was a first down Sixth, sixth catch for Titherington, which leads the team, does have that receiving touchdown. One of two pat touchdown passes thrown by Ben Thorson this afternoon. They try to set up a screen and reject it immediately. What a tackle made. Just the timing's a little off yeah, on that. That's a, that. That's a long way for the tight end the, to go. To go to get out there. You know, I think one thing that often gets you know overlooked you look at the character of each of these position groups and these players and they really reflect the assistant coaches that are on this staff and have to give james Houck a lot of credit because we're giving love to the receivers blocking out there but that's coached and that's why these kids respond that way and and they play so well with two team making plays and bonga catching the ball downfield it was jerron williams just read it like a book he knew it was coming and they'll give it to Giovanni Weeks right up the middle. There goes Weeks. Okay. Long ahead. It's going to be a first down. But, of course, the Cardinals, they will allow those runs as long as the clock continues to keep churning. Secondary, number five. A lot of slow guys getting up on this North Central defense. Yeah. I think the reason they're still in the game is because, to your point, this is one of the more competitive games you're going to play. But, I don't. I mean, these guys haven't played in the second half. It's hot out there today. It yeah. is very hot. But these guys haven't played in the second half. Yeah, it's surprising. It's 80 degrees out here, especially when it's about to be fall. Now first down and 10 from the 34, and they'll give it to Giovanni Weeks. Weeks yeah. dragging defenders with them as he will gain. It's probably five to seven. Five to 10 degrees warmer down there on the field too for these guys. It's also hot up here in the booth. I'm literally sweating. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if the AC is working or not, but <laughs> it is hot. Yeah, I, I've been drinking and I'm like, man, is the AC on it? Yeah. I, I just, it's just so hot up here. <laughs> but you know, it's been a fun game. Yeah, it's been a fun game to call. Obviously. If you're a Wheaton fan, not what you hoped for here on homecoming. No. They face second down and three from the 27-yard line. It's Henry Brown who takes the carry. Yeah. And it's Henry Brown. Oh, one tackle away from going into the end zone. But yeah. it's Good Jonah effort. Barazzo. I love this. Make the play. I love this. 
although the score is 21 to 54, the Wheaton offense against the starters for North Central, they're, they're not quitting. There's no quit in this football team, which has been impressive in the first three games of the season and obviously will serve them well as they carry on. There'll be things they learn from this and they'll carry them into the rest of the season here. But as, uh, as we look at the rest of this drive, that's really where your, your eyes are going to turn to the next, next couple weeks for both teams on their schedule. Clock dips under now eight minutes to go. And once again, another run for Henry Brown, who plows inside the 10, going to be brought down at the six yard line. And one of these, as you, Chris, to your point, as you do look ahead, Wheaton's played what you would think are the more difficult teams on their schedule until they get to Wash U. Yep. Which is going to be an entirely different game than what this looks like. They're yep. going to spread the ball out. They're going to throw it all over you. Yep. I don't know if that works better or worse for Wheaton than what we've seen so far, but, you know, Augie ran the ball a ton. Wesleyan was able to run it a little bit. So. You got some time to shore up your defense before you got a big game. Thunder will play Wash U on Family Weekend November 4th here at McCauley Stadium. Still a long time. That'll actually also be their second to last game of the season. And here is the carry. Henry Brown looking for some space. Touchdown. And he'll plow into the end zone for the touchdown. Got to give the offensive line great credit there. I just I have great respect for a team that in a situation where you've been physically handled by the other team's offense that I'm I'm pretty sure in the, the regular season, I don't have the stats in front of me, Wheaton's offensive output against this North Central team the last several years has been the closest games that these guys have played. North Central's had to play until late, late in the playoffs. So well, I mean, I think they hung. I, I, to be honest, I don't remember what the score of that national championship game was last year, but it wasn't like North Central was struggling to score. No, not at all. I mean, they are a juggernaut on offense, but I just give great props. I mean, to put 28 points on this defense, which, you know, clearly is a very talented defense with playmakers yeah. all over the field. Um, the offense maybe gets a lot of the press, yep. but I think that's a huge testament to what Wheaton can do with the football. And as they play the game tape, they're going to look offensively. I, I mean, credit to North Central, but the situations where Wheaton got beat was because they put themselves in bad situations. A couple times, yeah. Mostly with penalties, mm -hmm. a couple times with drop passes. And you can take a lot away from that when you look at the game tape, and certainly these guys are going to learn a lot from it. Coach Scott and the coaching staff are going to get these guys coached up for the remainder of the season, and I know they want to prove that they deserve a shot to continue to play in the, the season as it progresses. Yeah, if, as I look around here, we got about seven minutes left in the fourth quarter. If you're a high school kid who's out here watching from somewhere else, you're thinking about Wheaton College, this is a wonderful uh, – venue this is tons of people tons of people caring about small-time college football um, it's a really great environment and uh, really high quality football really yeah. impressed with the way the kids have been playing today and i had the privilege of being at uh, football chapel last night which the team does on the friday before each game and to hear the young men the seniors that uh, gave their senior shares and to hear about not only how their life was impacted by this football program, but the mission of Wheaton College for Christ and His Kingdom. It's, it's a powerful story to see young men competing on a football field, but these are young men that are going to go make a difference in the lives of their families in the world. And uh, that's, a, that's, that's something that I was very proud to see yes. here as a program, as Coach Scott has carried the torch of Mike Swider and the foundation that's been built and carrying on the mission of what Wheaton College is about. So it's, a, it's an impressive thing to see these young men, both on the football field and off. And, and to put just a finer point on that, too, we, we alums came in yesterday, and there's an, um, about 100 of us got together, listened to Coach Swider, former coach talk, and one of the big things he hit, hit on was leadership. And you looked around the room, and you saw a lot of men who are leaders in their community in the right way. You had a lot of pastors, business owners, men who are... Teachers, coaches. Yep. Just a real, for me as a guy who lives here in Wheaton and is able to come on campus on an almost weekly basis, I, it, I took a lot of joy. Um, and it was a wonderful day being a Wheaton alum yesterday. And you talk about the leadership that the Wheaton Thunder have. You have a lot of guys who are you know, still buying the program, guys who decided to come back despite the COVID-19 pandemic, basically take that COVID year. Some guys coming back in graduate school and still wanting to play for Coach Scott. Yeah, and absolutely. And it's Wheaton Thunder, a football team. Yeah, got to give a shout-out to Max Smith there coming up from a safety spot, setting the edge, not allowing that that run to bounce and, and spill and just creating the pile. Love to see him setting the edge on the defense. Great play there by Max. Once again, Cardinals just trying to run out the clock. The clock dips under 6.30. Here in this one, 54-28. Just another domain performance for North Central. Pretty much another day at the office for this team. Looking for their 30th consecutive regular season victory now. Motion up front, going to go up against the Cardinals. Dead ball, false start, number 89 of the offense. Five-yard penalty, second down.
still got starters in the game on both sides of the ball. I Absolutely. mean, you look, you look at North Central here. I mean, this is. I mean, I, I think this is a situation where uh, fatigue, fatigue may be setting in because yeah. it's hot out there. You know, mentally, North Central has been very sharp. I don't think of penalty wise committed much if any of the way a penalty a couple holding calls be interesting to see my I, I can see on the other side of the field i can see my son running around he's been doing it like <laughs> running basically sprints the entire game <laughs> ninth penalty for north central in this game backs him up at their own 22 yard line here's lane going to take off on a quarterback draw and there goes lane and has some space still on his feet luke lane and continuing to put up the numbers as he takes it into thunder territory yeah, So we blitz the a gap just the wrong angle. I mean, just bounces off the blitzing line. Two lineup. guys in the same same gap. That's yep, a problem. That's two missed tackles there. He's fast. Speed kills. Yeah, but you're also hurting yourself, right? If you're if you're a defensive tackle and you're in in B gap and your linebacker blitzes in B gap, there's nobody in A gap. Yep. And by the way, Lane now over 160 rushing yards. He has 166 passing yards and two rushing touchdowns. He's the leading rusher. For the Cardinals, in fact, just got updated. 187 rushing yards for Lane. What a game he's had. Mm. You're shot oh, out now, and play. he's going to be tackled right at the line of scrimmage. It is going to be Caleb McClung who makes the play. You know, that's a lot of rushing yards for a quarterback. I played in a game where the quarterback against us rushed for, I think, over 300 yards. That was an Augie quarterback, though. Yeah. So back when they ran a triple option. <laughs> Set an NCAA record at the time. In a losing effort. In a losing effort, effort yes. Yeah, late, late Luke Lane in only 5 of 7. He's only attempted seven passes. I remember when Jimmy Garoppolo, when he was with the San Francisco 49ers, that NFC Championship game against the Packers, he only threw nine times. Yeah. And they just ran it with Raheem Mostert, who got over 200 yards. The best thing about it was the Packers loss. <laughs> well, you got to love Caleb and Clunk's effort there. Just shoot the gap, chasing the run play down from behind. Great effort. Second down, 11. Here's Lane in. Oh, Lane to his right now. Going to step up. Ooh, Lane in. Ooh, ooh. And he's going to be dragged down. Peter Johannek there to dump him back at the 46-yard line. I understand just wanting to call the play mm -hmm. from North Central, but I just... You're worried kid, about your quarterback? This, this kid is a player, and you're getting swung around, <laughs> getting sacked, getting legs twisted up. I just I think I want to make sure my, my, my horse that's going to carry us to the end is... Uh, well, I, I think that there's, there is that... Uh, it's Wheaton North Central. Right? Oh, yeah, you you're, wanna... not, you're not going to you're gonna take your shot. I don't, they're, yeah. I, they're not going to let off the gas. I just think that you, you've been able to put the gas down sure. without putting your, sure. your quarterback in vulnerable positions like that. Ooh. Here's Lane throwing oh, out the backfield pass. It's oh. going to be dropped, I believe. Now, the question Ooh. was, was oh, it a calling. forward pass? That was close. That was close. That was awfully close to being a lateral. Looks like they're in a rule incomplete, so Hardy, it brings up fourth down. Hardy was pretty upset on that play. I don't oh, did, Ooh. I think Hardy might have rolled his ankle on that play. Mm -hmm. He like hyperextended. It looked, hopefully he's fine. He, he was frustrated after the play on, I don't know if it was just the incompletion that he was I mean, you have to be punting this football, yeah? We've seen, we've seen the pooch kick from Wayne and they're going for it on fourth down and 15 from their own 47. They must get to the Thunder 32 and, and now a timeout. I don't know how you don't Time out. put somebody Wheat. back. <laughs> First charge timeout at half. So actually, obviously this is homecoming. This is actually the 100th year anniversary of homecoming here at Wheaton College. And this is actually also the first football game to take place, or sorry, the first football game to take place was back in 1925. And that was, was against Northwestern. I'm not talking about the Northwestern Wildcats from Evanston, but actually North Central. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. And of course, Wheaton won that game 20 to nothing. And now 98 years later, this rivalry continues. Yeah, that's right. On. Obviously, Wheaton does hold the edge all time. It's pretty close, though. Yeah. A 55 47 3 edge, but again, the Cardinals, they've won the last two, including last year's matchup, 33 20. What a great game that was for Ethan Greenfield as well as D'Angelo Hardy. And most likely than not, they will, they will retain the battle, the Little Brass Bell Trophy that you can see on the far side, or was there on the far side? It's over there still. I, I oh, think yeah. one thing in preparation for this game, the privilege to call it, uh, you just look back at the scores going back to the early 2000s where I think this, this this game took on a different meaning. And every game has a story to it. It really does when you look at those scores. Yep. I mean, I think back to 2006. Yeah. Played them here. A vaunted North Central offense came in, and Chaz Black. Get in the end zone. Chaz Black, yeah. running back at the time, rushed for well over 200 yards. 
and we had quite the day, but you look back to those games, and it's oh, like yeah. every one of them you can see, you know, it's just a story. I remember that goes each and every it. one of them. Yep. Angelo Hardy was trying to down the pooch kick from Lane, and he's in the end zone. And it looks like he is all right as he's being helped by Jacob Parody, as well as Sean Allen. By the way, with last year's win for the Cardinals, they retained the brass bell for the first time since the 2011 season. And with this win, they'll retain the trophy for the third consecutive season for the first time since the 2009-12 season when the Cardinals won it for four straight years. Yeah, that was a real interesting time. That's when North Central really started to, to make their ascent to the top of Division Three football, and, and Wheaton really had to, to question what they were doing as they lost four games and they weren't really that competitive. After that, Wheaton really, um, those are some of the best Wheaton teams we've ever seen from 2013 through 2019. So Giovanni Weeks taking it up Ooh, to the 31 yard line. Hopefully, North Central number 29. Will Vernon looks like he's all right. He, he's hurt. Now we have an injured Cardinals on the field. Oh man, his knee. Field. Yeah, he, he got buckled up on that tackle. You just hope, hope he's not okay. on the field for an injury, injury timeout. Junior out of Lexington, Lexington Kentucky the intended to by the training staff. Just hope that he is all right. It's been a physical game. Of course, we talked about the fact that it's warmer than usual. It's about 80 degrees. Maybe fatigue playing into a factor for both teams despite the Cardinals being up so much. It was a physical finish for the run from Gio. I mean, he, he finished that driving his legs and I think he just kind of got buckled up underneath. But it's interesting. A lot of the starters were still on the field for North Central, so... Off. There we go. Yep. Good to see him walk off. You just hope that hopefully it was just pain in the moment and he's okay. He, he is able to walk off, off his own power. Now 325 to go. You're in the fourth quarter. Yeah, I mean I think situationally if you're Wheaton here, you're you, you view this as like each possession is a chance to win. Just win this possession. You got three minutes and twenty-four seconds to drive the football down the field here and get some more points on the board. Henry Brown is in the game. Ben Thorson still in the game for the Thunder. Operating at the 33-yard line. Thorson, quick throw, strike. He's got catch. Ben Banca on the play. And he'll be first right down. near the first down sticks. We'll see where the rest want to mark it. I'm calling a first down. Clock stopping the clock. It's a great throw by Thorson, anticipating Bunga coming out of the route. I mean, it's it's an out route that you kind of sit down in zone coverage. Um, and Bunga making a phenomenal catch because that ball was on him the moment his head turned around. Looks like you got some backup safeties coming in. Yep. Now from the 44-yard line, Cordenhoven in motion, and they'll hand it off. It's going to be wow. a nice carry for him. Oh, we got a run on behind the, the play. 49. There was a flag on the play right at the 47-yard line on the near hash. Well, for Wheaton after play. this one, they'll be on the road again. Personal Elder. foul. Illegal hands to the face. Number 77 of the offense. 15-yard penalty. First down. Elijah, Nitz, Elijah Nitz is a little slow to get up there. Hopefully, yep. I think he's got it. Yep. Penalties against Aiden Kingsbury, the left tackle. And as I was about to say before the referee spoke, Wheaton will be playing at Elmers on the road. Then they have Carthage here at home on October 14th. And then back-to-back -back row games with Carroll and Milken. And then that matchup you were talking about, Wash U out on Family Weekend. And then North Park to end the season. So if you're... A Thunder fan, obviously this loss hurts, but we were talking a little bit at halftime. If As long as the Thunder can just win out, yeah. they already had that impressive win against the Titans, UW Oshkosh, on their opening game. As long as they win out, they sh they still have a good chance of making the playoffs. Absolutely. First down and 10, 20 rather, and that pass is going to be dropped. Oh, bummer. Giovanni Weeks was trying to catch it out of the backfield, looked up, but did not secure it. And physical block there. Paul oh. Fay just... Physically overwhelming the defender from North Central there. You love to see that late in the game. Still you know, one, of the, one thing we didn't hadn't really talked about here that the top half of the CCW versus the bottom half of the CCW. I'm not sure we've seen some disparity like that in a long time. I mean, Elmhurst and, and Carthage are really having a tough tough go this year. So is Illinois and Wesley. And Milliken. And Illinois Wesley. Yeah. I mean, proud programs. Programs with a lot of history, a lot of pedigree. Oh, man, what a block. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Pass to Giovanni Weeks up to the 40-yard line. And get a little bit back right there. Meanwhile, for North Central, this was probably their toughest game of the season, and they pretty much passed with flying colors. After this, they'll be at home against Carroll, and then they have Milliken on the road on October 14th, then Wash U on October 21st, North Park on October 28th, 
Illinois Wesleyan at home on November 4th, and then Augustana to end the season. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see. You keep, pay attention to North Central as they even progress through the playoffs as far as the uh, the points scored against this North Central defense. I think they're going to be a tall task for any team they play. Yeah. From the 41-yard oh. line, Thor's in a sliding catch. Great and it's play. going to be caught. Kortenhoven has the grab. It's going to be a first down for the Thunder. Impressive. Thorson stood in there. He knew he was going to take a hit. Stepped in there, delivered the ball, and Kortenhoven doing a great job of going down, catching that ball, getting his hands underneath it, securing the catch. Dan Lester taking himself out of the game. All-American defense, a tackle on the sideline. By the way, a third catch for Kortenhoven. A minute 25 to go. We'll hand it off to Giovanni Weeks. Well, again, we talked about he already has Ola Tetri's record. He already has Chuck... Or he has, he's actually one rushing touchdown shy of Chuck Shane here's record. He already broke Mark Lefter's record for the most total touchdowns. And so Weeks, unless he scores another rushing touchdown, still has a chance to break that record next week against Elmhurst. Yeah, these guys are all very tired. It's <laughs> hot out there, you can tell. Yeah. Under a minute now left to play, second down and five from the 37. Here's Thorson. Looking to throw, Thorson going to dial up the deep ball for the end zone, and the pass is going to yeah, be incomplete. But there is a flag on the play. It was intended for Seth Kortenhoven. Wow. Couldn't tell who was in coverage there. He threw his hands up, but, I mean, he had his hands all over, no yeah. idea where the ball was. Well, he Pass turned. interference. Defense number 10, 15-yard penalty in the previous spot. Automatic, first down. It goes against the safety, Zach Ward. So we'll move the chains for the Thunder. Looking for a garbage touchdown and some momentum to go into next week's game against the Blue Jays. I think really that was an effort by Cordova and just trying to get back to the football. Timeout, North Central. Their second charge timeout of the half. Okay. You better believe they did. there's pride on that side of the ball. They do not want to give up a touchdown here because players are tired. Right. Uh, he's over there. Coach is giving his guys a breather, but he's also saying, look, guys, have some resolve. Yep. You don't want to give up a garbage touchdown to Wheaton. And Wheaton's sitting here saying, hey, if you look at the way we played in the second half, it's a different football game. We did some things in the first half that put us behind and clearly coming out swinging North Central, going on second play. 60, 70 yards for a touchdown set the tone for the way this game was going to play out. Yeah, and I mean, I don't look at this and say North Central was just trying to bleed clock and get out of get out of this game. I mean, that this has been a... I don't see any difference in game plan between first and second half necessarily on the North Central no. perspective. By the, way, by the way, let's go around the CCIW. Illinois Wesleyan currently leads Milliken 35 to three. Start of the fourth quarter. Meanwhile, against meanwhile between Carroll and Augustana, Carroll leads 19-17, wow. and WashU leads 38 to seven against North Park. Start of the fourth quarter in that one. Of course, in our ball game, Cardinals a 54-28 lead. Yeah, the, against the Thunder. The surprising one there to me is the Carroll Augustana matchup. People have said Carroll's playing better football, but. You got to give great props to Carroll to be up one yep. in that football game late. And here is the handoff. It's going to be Henry Brown. What a physical one. Yeah. That. Is that Antoine Walker? Yeah. And now a late Face flash mask. comes on at the end. That was Antoine Walker. That Brown just great physical run. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic. First down. That one will move the chains. Yeah, just a great physical run. One of the, I think, you know, I don't know who's in charge of, of the scheduling on these things, but what, over the over the last few years, this is a big time game for not just the CCIW, but for Division Three football. It's been a well officiated game. You know, you don't feel like the refs have ever really lost control of these games. It's pretty equally called both ways. Yeah, I mean, and it's it's a physical football game. They've let them be physical, but yeah. they've they've let it they've kept it in check when yep. it's through the echo of the whistle, maybe too far early on. Yeah, <laughs> and they called it. Yep. So now first down and goal from the seven. Henry Brown in the backfield. Here's Thorson looking left, lops it for the end zone. Passes. What a route! What a route. Is it caught for the yeah, touchdown. touchdown? They will say the back judge yep. called it. Yep. He's in for the touchdown. It's going to be Seth Courtnoven who nice takes throw. it in. Nice lob pass there from Ben Thorson. Here's the Thunder. At least something to cheer about, but otherwise not that much. They put up 34 points against the Cardinals, but once again, North Central 54. 
Th that is tough for a DB in man coverage in that situation. I think, I don't know if it was intended on the route, but it looked like Cordovan chopped his feet while the ball was in the air right. and then went back to the corner to make a great catch. It's a phenomenal play by the, uh, by the Wheaton offense there. Great throw from Thorson, great catch. Four catches, 61 yards, and a touchdown now for Cordovan with 19 seconds to go. Thunder trail, 54, 35. Here you go, Chris. Oh, this. well. Check it out on the replay once again as he was battling up against Jerron Williams in coverage. Why is it? What does he want there? I mean, they were both being physical with their hands there. I mean, great catch, great route. It's just tough. I mean, if you're in man coverage as a DB, you're out on an island there, and you obviously that's why you're there. Oh, yeah. But it's just a tough double move, and when a quarterback's got the ball up in the air, great throw, beats great defense. Yep. And for the Cardinals. This win will now be their 30th consecutive regular season win, their 27th consecutive CCIW win, night, and now they'll be on a 19-game winning streak. And if you include the 2019 season, the Cardinals are 46 and two. Oh. Those two losses, of course, coming to Wheaton back in 2019, the year they won the national championship, and then in 2021, where they lost to Mary Harlan Baylor. And that was when Luke Lanin was a freshman, but he has shown so much growth and development from freshman year to sophomore, and now taking even bigger steps here in his junior year. As you see Josh Whitnett trying the onside kick. <laughs> really? And it'll be fielded by the Cardinals, and that should end any sort of shenanigans. No, they're going to go throw it. They're going to try to take a shot. After we kicked, yeah, after we kicked an onside kick. Uh, I'm not sure. Don't you, if, I mean, if you're the Cardinals, don't you just want to get out of this game? You got the W. You're already up 54 35. Just take a knee and just go. Oh, I think you're right, but I don't think that's going to happen. I mean, this this I'm, this runs deep. Yeah, this the, runs deep. The, I understand uh, it runs deep, but the last thing you you're want right. you're is definitely for right. D'Angelo Hardy, for example, to get hurt. No, you're totally or for right. for quarterback Luke Lane to get hurt. I just think they're going to take a shot here. Well, we'll see what the Cardinals want to do. It looks like a victory formation it does. coming out here. So Luke Lenin, one knee, and that should do it. <laughs> nice, D'Angelo Hardy showing a little bit of swag yeah. as the clock runs close to zero here. North Central spoils the homecoming festivities 54 35 as they hand the Thunder their first loss of the season. Meanwhile, the Cardinals, they will improve to 4-0 on the season, retain the Little Brass Bell Trophy now for the first time since the 2009-2012 season where they had it for four years. And what a run the Cardinals have had. Again, still looking for their third national championship in four years. And assuming that they beat everyone else on their schedule and then comes the playoffs, they once again have an excellent opportunity to get their second straight title. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think if you look at this game, coming in as the number one team ranked nationally, they earned that position, yeah. and they played like the number one team did. in the country. And, and they are they deservedly so are in that position, and you want them to have players stay healthy. You want them to put themselves in a position to continue to defend their title. I think the part that I take away from this game, I, I will be surprised to see this season. If you sell 35 points by a team against North Central, I'd, I'd be shocked if the team scores 35 points on this team yeah. deep into the playoffs. This is a talented North Central defense, and I think we can take a lot of positives away from that. And if they execute and don't put themselves in or challenging positions, they know they're going to be in a place to win every game. And as you said, that WashU game late in the season is going to present, present some different challenges, um, but ultimately is going to be a test to see if this Wheaton team really is a team that's a 9-1 team. And yeah. If they are, hopefully they'll get a shot to continue to play into the playoffs. Hey, there's a lot, a lot of talent on this Wheaton football team. And... Um, They've, there is no game the rest of the way that I think they're going to be step on the field without having more talent than the other team. So it's really about just staying focused for the next next six weeks. One last thought on North Central here. Really appreciate it. Hey, just a quality ball club that would walk through, no, you know, getting in people's faces, still going through. Their captains led their way as they went through the handshake line before they start celebrating their CCI or their uh, little brass bell win. Yeah, and you can tell. I mean, it still matters. These games matter, even though. They have aspirations of winning the national title. They, they want to etch their name on that trophy, and they know that Wheaton leads the series, although it's close. And they want to notch another one for North Central, and that's why this game matters so much to both programs. And every player that's ever played in this game has been grateful if they've been able to hoist that trophy, and those that did not are ones that uh, hopefully the player looks like North Central player down here. I hope he's okay. Oh, man. 
Hopefully he's just taking a break. Break. Yeah, he was in the middle of the huddle. I couldn't oh, okay. get a number on that. It looks like exhaustion. Yeah, I think he's just tired. Yep. We can see some of the Cardinals players and the North Central faithful who traveled 20 minutes up north from Naperville to cheer on their team as North Central gets to retain the trophy for one for an additional year. These two teams will be at it next year here in Wheaton as North Central looks to go for four consecutive wins against the Thunder and retain the Little Brass Bell for a fourth consecutive season. And overall, looking at the stats, this rushing attack, we were just talking about multiple times, 447 yards rushing. Luke Lanin leading the way, 187 yards on 13 carries. He found the end zone twice. How many passing yards did they have today? If you take out, you know, I'm 70 just, yards, take out the 70 yards. Yeah, that was basic. Pass. Yeah. If you take out the passing yards from Lanin? Well, no, I'm sorry. They had that little, you know, they f when you flip it forward, it counts as passing yards oh, cool. on the jet sweep. Well, if you take one... If you take 70 from 166, he would oh, have yeah. 96-yard passing. Yeah. yeah. But he only, he only threw eight times, completed five passes. Of course, that deep bomb to D'Angelo Hardy. And he, he rushed a couple times where he you know he made the smart decision to run with it instead of passing it. But that is incredible to only throw the ball eight times. Yeah. But and Joe score so 54 points doing yeah. it. And <laughs> Joe Sacco, of course, six carries, 138 yards, two rushing touchdowns. He was dominant in the first half. Sean Allen, 15 carries, 79 yards, didn't find the end zone, but Coleman and Chisholm each finding the end zone, with Coleman finding it once, Chisholm finding it two times, just a dominant rushing attack, and that pretty much was was the story of the Thunder, who struggled to stop the running game against Tyler Ravelli and the Augustana rushing attack, They that issue just pretty much continued here in, against North Central. Yeah, I, I think if I'm a, if I'm trying to find positives for Wheaton in this game, I think it's the way that the offense played. I think they had a couple penalties that hurt them, but generally speaking, I thought they played pretty well. I thought the passing game found some traction later. Uh, we missed a couple deep shots, but the physical nature of the of the front five being able to run pretty effectively the entire game. You know, it's a good offense. Um, I think defensively, they kept coming, but we got to figure out a way to, to be a little bit better tackling, uh, especially when we're coming on the blitz, being under control a little bit more. But you know, there's a lot of talent. I really believe in the coaches that we have. I think they're going to get these guys coached up, and I think we're making improvements with each week. Yeah, I mean, you look coming into this game, North Central averaged over six yards a carry. You know, this is a team built to run the football, play action pass, RPO plays for Lennon uh, uh, off of that. And that's exactly what they did, which is what a great team is going to do. They're going to come in and do what they're built to do. Mm -hmm. And to Tim's point, I think the, the fact that this, this game was fought by starters to the very end on both sides of the ball is a testament to how much this game means to both teams. But if you're waiting to sit here and say we were able to, against their starters, put 35 points on the board is something that they'll look back and take, take something from offensively in the first half. They'll definitely be, it's going to be tough to watch some of those third down situations that were, were definitely there to be had and we just didn't execute or put ourselves behind the chains. And, and as you said, the coaches will get, Coach Nightingale will have his defense dialed up to make sure they can handle the challenges each week that come here for the rest of the season. I don't been, want to be Elmhurst. <laughs> and if you're Ben Thorson, he finished 22 of 38, 235 yards, three touchdowns. Giovanni Leakes, 25 carries, a buck 51, one rushing touchdown, of course. Broke Sol Tetchu's record for the most career rushing yards. He's going to try to go for Chuck Shane Hare's record for the most rushing touchdowns. He only needs one to tie, two to break it. And then Seth Kornhoven leading the way in terms of receiving yards, four catches, 61 yards, a touchdown. Tetherington, five catches, 60 yards, also a touchdown. And Ben Bonga, five catches, 58 yards, and a touchdown. So overall, the Thunder showed promise, as you said, in the second half, but still a lot of work to be done if they're going to be contending with the best team in the country. Yeah. Well, from all of us here on the Wheaton Thunder Sports Network and my co-host Tim Marsh and Chris Fossum, I'm Aiden Kong saying so long from Wheaton, Illinois.